Hello and welcome Ooh. back to Outlander's Guide to Ladar. It is session 43. Oh my goodness, hello. Welcome oh. back. I missed wow. you. I missed you all. It's been a little while. And now we're here. And we're gonna make this count. <laughs> <laughs> It, this music. It's so great to have the group together. I'm really happy. Ooh. Agreed, agreed. Austin, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> ah. ah, Matt, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't afford to pay rent this month. Huh? We did it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't like Not anyone quite. Else. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just get it. <laughs> But here we are, here's the table once again with all the junk we've been accumulating over 43 sessions. <laughs> a beautiful sunset in the distance. The... Oh, there he is. I don't even know how to describe this enough there. Chunk. You know, that's a fair point. We, we, need more. we really do need to Definitely. start filling these walls out. Yeah. This house doesn't feel like home yet. Oh no. You've been here so long. <laughs> For like over a year. Well, it's like after vacation, you come back, you're like, yeah. oh, do I really want to unpack? <laughs> right. We Just should at least get like a Europe, mini fridge. Like a little over a month ago, and then I come home and it's like, what? No induction stove? What's going on? All right, Why so I'm thinking of. Let's look sensible instead of looking like giant Lego pieces. <laughs> mini fridge. Uh. <laughs> I I'll bean work bag on it. chair. Bean <laughs> bag chair. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Very well. One uh, of those like ironic welcome mats. Uh, should we? Should it say yeah, live, it laugh, welcome. love? No, Wait, it says but welcome, welcome mat. Welcome mat. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh hello, it's just for me. <laughs> it's just under your chair. <laughs> okay. Um, it's been a while, so I'm going to leave the very, very important task of uh, uh, updating us on what happened last time to Sid. Alrighty. Do you uh, desire yeah. music? Uh, music can be on low volume, please. If yeah. possible. Um, yeah. yeah, first of all, I want to share something that I'm usually not nervous when it comes to doing recaps. Right now, my hands are shaking, so sorry if I fumble over words or anything. <laughs> and I will ask for player participation as we do this recap. Oh. <gasps> oh. Oh, that noise. Oh. I know do that I need noise. To open... Please okay. open <gasps> the screen. Oh. What? Give me a second. Oh no! Holy crap! It's, oh my god! It's happening! Oh damn! This is oh no! This is gonna be so. Everyone is freaking out, but I don't have it on stream yet. Ah! Oh! Oh! Okay. It's one of them. Oh I my can tell goodness. already. This is gonna be huge. <laughs> Right. You, you may you may you may begin. Okay. So last time on Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, issue forty-two, <laughs> we cross one of the many doors of the Grand Tower and find ourselves in a vibrant, colorful, and noisy world surrounded by plants, trees, and flowers. We discover many things, among others, a fruit called a grans, some berries called everfrost berries, and we find shelter in Aaron's tower, not canon. I don't know how that tower looks like, so that is just how it looks in my <laughs> head. It looks good to me. <laughs> oh my god. It's canon now. <laughs> oh, and there's also the, the morning dew uh, bush, I forgot, the morning dew leaves. Uh, so, moving on. Oh. We find an unknown species, some sort of stone turtle, perhaps? Uh, and may Talix voice the first line, the rest be Pips. This must be the king of all rocks, Pip. 
Oh, hello, your magnificence. I really like your shell. What's your name? Do you have a family? You want a grots? Yeah, you can't run from me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a plan. I can speak to plans. <laughs> As the stranger is my forte, Pontifex to the rescue. Uh, it may be that it is rude or that the spell doesn't work, uh, but I should fill it with water for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so after our grand discovery that didn't lead to much, sadly, uh, our flying companions scout ahead and discover oh. a great dense fog enveloping part of the jungle in the distance. As we walk through these forest wilds, it seems that Brook trips over a petrified flower of sorts, falling to the ground. As we notice the trees and the leaves and the plants surrounding us slowly turning to stone. Further on, we hear the sound of a lone herd of wyvern shrieking towards the looming dust fog. And as any old adventure, any grand adventurer would do, uh, it seems like Talix wants to be the hero of the party, <laughs> climbing to the top of the grand tall tree tops and riding the wyvern into the dust clouds. And the rest of the party are sort of left dumbfounded and have to collect uh, Talix's hat and then decide, all right, I guess we're crossing into this great fog now. <laughs> And so, atop the wyvern, through the store, Talix notices something incredible. It is a grand ribcage, with ruins surrounding it, and trees, and I believe a fountain? It's been a while. <laughs> uh, as they land, Talix leaves equipment behind, as the rest of the groups rest of the group walks to some very spiky, sharp grass. It hurts to walk <laughs> on. It's a tough time. And uh, Talix uses a flying leaf to distract a very disturbing heart creature that walks on its own uh, blood vessel tendrils. It's a strange sight. Uh, eventually, the rest of the party makes their way through the dust cloud. And Tekka... Um, understandably so, I'd say. Uh, wyverns are spooky, so decides to scare off the very spooked wyvern in the first place. Uh, and then Talix makes an unexpected acquaintance. Uh, do you need help? Are you alone? M my partner is down there. I, I need to get her out. Do you know what that thing is? They separated us. Their screams hurt my ears. We didn't provoke them. And it seems that Pontifex has arrived at some conclusions when it comes to this grand ribcage. A dragon larger than the Lord of the Sky? Ruminating on those thoughts, he also notices a trail of dusty footprints leading even closer to the ruins. The party reunites with a slap, a <laughs> hug, and a return of belongings. Brooke begins. Telix, what have you brought us into? Who is this? Uh, sorry, Freda. Murder Claw is very sweet, actually. Uh, he was very kind to me. She's been through a lot. Who we'll named this thing Murder Claw? You should meet my cat's famine and pestilence and my horse grave stomp. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a group chat go going on, you know, to learn about everything that's going on here. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, you, you can be there on, on your own time. Uh, we should essentially <laughs> learn uh, this uh, um, this duo are archaeologists. Uh, arriving at these ruins, and that the Ladarians call this dragon that we see the ribcage of, roughly translated as Stilling Dread. And what happens next? I guess it's time to find out. Oh, wow. Good. Oh, <laughs> so I'll see you get recap next week, right, Dennis? 
Yeah, I got it. <laughs> gonna be as good. <laughs> Amazing. Dennis, I need you to really just plummet that bar to the... To the for me. I'll raise it. I'll raise it. Oh, this, this was incredible. Wow. You have to post this somewhere so that I can... I, it this. will be posted, don't worry. Thank you. That was incredible. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> I'm happy you liked it. Yes! Yes, we did! Ladaria graphic novel adaptation win? <laughs> Never! <laughs> in, in, in a... What do you mean? We need the whole thing. If Mercer gets one, why don't we... Um... Animated series win. First, we just need to get about twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> Is that it? Start a Kickstarter. <laughs> Here's your inspiration, Sid. Ah. Uh, and... Well, it depends on how long the campaign will be, I guess. It's just one die, and it will just affect one roll. But my appreciation for this <laughs> is. Thank you. <laughs> ah, I'm very happy right now. Can we scale that d20 up just a little? Like, <laughs> make like it, a lot of it? Make it Can we bigger. just give him like a brick? <laughs> D20 for that book? It's a 20 yeah, on every side. <laughs> I want this one to have some weight whenever you use it. <laughs> oh. Amazing, Sid. <laughs> I want to forget that that's inspiration and just think it's like table decoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't we have we have one up there on the shelf? Yeah, the laser mouth inspiration. Did we not use that name for Austin's comic? I thought they were all supposed to have unique names. Oh no! We can't have repeats. How about we just call this one Sanspiration? Yeah. <laughs> this one was more of a graphic novel. There you go. So graphic novel spiration. Graphic novel inspiration. <laughs> the next there one has to be go. read right to left. <laughs> Do you still have a copy of every inspiration die? Um, I only started keeping track of them 30 sessions ago. Oh, the okay. first dozen is lost to time and space. But And the Twitch archives and, <laughs> and your save files. Uh, oh, the loading failed. <laughs> this oh, no. was what I was the afraid ribs. of. The ribs, oh, no. ribs are gone. Um, ribs. Oh no. <laughs> it's unfortunately required. Oh yeah, they're reloading. way up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh hey, but, but there's, there's stuff sometimes. here that wasn't here last time. Like uh, there's like some broken tiles on the floor, and there's like benches and stuff over here that I never saw. And less so orbs. All the stuff that didn't load before now did, except now there's no rib. <laughs> the rib was I guess it important. Left. I deleted all the tiles that weren't loading for you guys last time. I thought it was going to be the only issue, but apparently it isn't. Is there like a maximum to the number of objects that we can load or? Um, no, the, those, the things that were missing were just files like were cached on my end, oh. but not on yours. Uh, so the link was broken, but my game thought, thought they were fine. Let's give it one more try. It was working this morning. Something. Oh, there we go. Yes. Da, da, da. Yeah. Um, I will need you guys. Oh, I told you, we're not done. We're not out of the woods yet because things just couldn't be simple for me. <coughs> but now we should be good. Uh, last time. You guys still had to actually make a decision as to how you wanted to approach this particular situation. Uh, you right. had spotted a set of stairs leading downward, right where um, this part is currently weeping. Uh, there is another one over here that you guys have avoided so far. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's time to choose how uh, you want to approach this particular situation that you guys are in. Well, thankfully, uh, after the last session ended, we as players um, talked outside of the game and came to a plan. Yep. And During uh, we're the last ready to month go. and a half, yep. we've deliberated. Mm -hmm. So let's put that into action. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
So what did we decide, Dennis? If you want to just tell our <laughs> audience. Well, <laughs> Pip goes in first and we follow <laughs> after. Also, he takes off all of his armor. So he is quieter. Um, can you... So where are the stairs again? Can you show me on the uh, map? They are directly beneath this sweeping heart that is kind of oh, standing good. over them right now. Uh, let me... Let me, like, for reference, uh, this is the entrance of them. The Weeping Heart, is it in the process of moving somewhere, or is it just, like, staying there? Um, it wasn't there when Talix first got here. It has come out from uh, up from the staircase uh, right now it's just sort of like um uh, using the verb standing it feels a little off but it's uh, standing there um and then at, at some point it begins to move oh right uh, and i have to be careful when i move these uh, it's going to begin to move but it's mainly uh, it's mainly wandering in that area hmm. yeah. And remind me, because it's been a while. Um, did Frida say something about them making some sort of noise that, like, screwed with people's heads? Uh, they yeah. Shriek. Yeah. They shriek and it hurts. I think uh, maybe Pip would just start to, like, um, grab some some cloth from his pouch and just start wadding it up and maybe shoving it in his ears. Hmm. That's actually a good idea. I will follow suit. Um, besides that, I think we have like two options. Either we <coughs> approach it slowly and just make our way through the front door taking out these hearts one by one. Or <coughs> we find a second exit and sneak in through that. If we want to or if we elect to go down this one, I can cause a distraction off in a distance, not very far, but uh, I guess enough to get it off of the stairs. Uh, but I am concerned, what about uh, Duchess and Farum? I don't know what these hearts exactly do, but I don't want to come back to a scene. Well, yeah, we should put them a ways off. The only problem with your distraction could be that if there is more things inside, they could also come towards the egg. Entrance, right? All right. Well, I, this distraction I can do. Uh, it, it doesn't really take much to do. Uh, so I suppose, if nothing else, it is worth a shot. Maybe if we fight some inside, they, we just fight one less. Uh, I prefer to just have, you know, one or two screams instead of three. Yeah, I think knowing that we don't really know what we're up against down there, less things to fight is better. Uh, is Miss Frida going to come with us, or are you going to wait out here? If that's okay, I would rather come with you. I will not get in your way, I promise. Okay, then I suppose we need to set up Duchess and Farum Pip, uh, somewhere else. Can you speak to them for us? Tell them to, you know, hide a ways away and wait our turn. Um, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Hey, okay, so here's the deal. There's a bunch of really, really creepy... Oh, I don't even know how to explain this to you. 
there's really bad things over there and they'll probably kill you if you don't go way over there and hide, okay? We'll be back, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, Duchess is like ready to, ta ready to take them on. Uh, she wants to, to, to prove herself, but with um, a little bit of gentle insistence, you convince her that um, as if it was her own idea that she needs to watch over for room who would otherwise definitely get himself <laughs> hurt. Um, and the, the, the two horses move away. Uh, until eventually they are they are out of sight, but like looking at the tree behind which they disappeared, you do see um, a after a few seconds the Duchess is peeking through. Um, the owners of the respective horses, please take your tokens back. All right, Professor, what have you got? Yeah, I can only do it out to about 30 feet, so... I suppose we should try to get into position. Get as close as we feel we can before I do it. Should we all, like, strike at once? Is, is this going to lure it away from us? Uh, yes, I can... Uh, I don't know, I, I can make a sound or a, something uh, about 30 feet away. Okay, yeah. So I can aim it uh, maybe around the corner um, and he'll point like, I guess, I don't know if you can see my cursor over here, like mm -hmm. under this little bit behind it. Yeah. But uh, I have to get fairly close for this, so. Hmm. Is it maybe a wise idea to leave the armor? Probably so. Great. Then I guess he'll he'll start the process of getting out of his uh his splint armor. Clink clink. Stop making that noise, Brock. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, my AC window by ten. <laughs> I forget I have a four dexterity. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right, it's fine, it's fine. Who needs 20? 10 will do. Great. Okay. Uh, Alright, any other preparations? Are we all putting cloth in our ear? I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm torn about it personally because I'm afraid that that means we're not going to hear something else. Pip can do it because Squeak can telepathically tell Pip what's going on or what people say. Oh. Well, but I guess Alex will try it for now. He's got a a stole that he can wrap around his head. I don't even know if that would do much good, but. Doesn't have many options. I guess Pontifex is going to use that bit of his water skin and like he saw his hood pulled over his head. He's going to like kind of dump some of the water on the on the, the cloak hood of it. So it's kind of like wet and like sticks to the side of his head. He doesn't really have ears. He has holes. So <laughs> it just kind of like wet covers the side of his head. Cork a hole in it. Mm -mm. I do to my anatomy. I feel like if anything goes in there, it doesn't come back out, so... <laughs> so... So we're just gonna, like... Make it to this staircase as quickly and quietly as possible? Hmm. Yeah, get uh, close enough till maybe I can... I don't know. I can do this distraction multiple times, so maybe... I turn it around and then I move it to behind the wall, that sort of thing. Lead it away. As as we get closer, I can keep doing it. Ah, oh. out of my way! <laughs> 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 sort of uh, 
Okay. Fip just sort of like peeks around this rib and takes a look at the heart. Does does it even have eyes? Mm, roll a perception check. I, I thought we Actually, like asked about this last session and it was like, yeah, it only responded to... All I can do is sounds. I can, uh, I can megaphone. I can make flames flicker, brighten, dim, or change color. I can make the ground shake. That's kind of cool. Uh, I can make an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of my choice within range. Uh, Once are you, I can uh... cause an unlocked door window to fly open or slam shut, or I can change the appearance of my eyes. So the sound is what I would do. Uh, Austin, there is a... As far as Pip can tell, there are no actual eyes on this thing. Another option is I could just have the cat uh, swoop by and leave, but I don't want it to shriek, you know. So what do you do? I guess, I guess is what we're going to do. I'm going to move up. Uh, I guess Pontifex is going to be kind of leading this one a little bit to get close enough to put a sound uh, like over here between under this arch and then okay. as I move closer I'm gonna move the sound like around the corner um, basically try to use sound cues to lure this thing and guide it away okay this is, pretty close. this is what thaumaturgy yeah what kind of sound is it uh I think I'm gonna. It can do things like rumbling of thunder and whispers and cries of ravens. It, it can be pretty like diverse. So I think I'm gonna make it sound like, uh, like heavy like boot prints and like snapping twigs to make it sound like realistic footsteps that are like walking through brush and like stepping on rocks and and snapping twigs and stuff and try to make it sound like footsteps are moving away. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna cast it repeatedly. Uh, it's like here and then like here and then back here. All right. It is a range of, thir of 30 feet, which yeah, is like just enough from where you are to like begin uh, roughly to mm. have it uh, over here in the back. Um, and you see this enormous heart uh, responding to the, to the noise and beginning to um, slowly get around the, the, the edge of the staircase and it's being uh, led just as you uh, wanted it to in, in that direction uh, and then I'm gonna keep going and as soon as it rounds the corner he's gonna give the okay go and <laughs> he's gonna try <laughs> he's gonna, right. gonna go alright you need to be within 30 feet of the origin of the sound right yeah so, like, we would have already been up here at this point. Yeah, he's been, like, slowly creep. Uh, and then once he's around the corner, the no longer creep. Oh, God. I'm too big. Because that's, like... <laughs> you can fit. Yep, there. Okay. Um, I would like to ask everybody... Uh, to roll a wisdom check, not a save. Oh, yeah. Squeak two or a squeak two. Uh, what about the cat? Um, hmm. The cat, too. Oh, God, I tabbed out. I didn't notice how terrible that roll was. <laughs> I missed my yeah, the complaining about the roll. Oh, wait, all <laughs> three of the wisdom. Yeah, all three wisdom characters rolled shit. <laughs> um, Please tell me shit as we should. Oops. I can't hear anything. I think rolled well. I need to roll my own. A 
scissors and well all right <laughs> these are the rules um you quickly uh, and silently sprint towards the uh, the steps uh, Pontifex you you hang back just a little bit uh, um, to keep luring the heart like being um, in a way that would keep its attention away from your group uh, as you uh, somewhat silently um, quieter than usual uh, you make your way to the steps and the first person to make it there you can see uh, that at the bottom uh, it, it opens up into a hallway so you can't really see where it's going but you can see that there is a uh, light that's seeping in from the from the floor below uh, you're all going in yeah okay uh, take your... is the last in Take your minis back to your table as I am about to unload this map. Taking this one. Where did Pip go? Where did, where did Brook go? I lost him. Oh, uh, Pip here. got lodged into the rocks. <laughs> my goodness. Oh my oh, goodness. Crap. Ah, why yeah, is everything colliding into each on? other? Oh. Uh, because I have removed the thing where it automatically lifts over things, so you uh, can walk behind. Mm, beneath also, uh, the ribs. Uh, I can't stack my tressum on my own token anymore. Uh, right, so to undo the thing I did, you can right click on your own uh, minis and hover over toggles and toggle auto rise again. Auto raise. Mm. Uh, except for Sid, who doesn't have to do it. <laughs> Sid! <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming back. I pressed the wrong button. That's uh, all. Oh, I just saw your Discord messages. Is 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 it everything okay, it, Sid? It, everything is okay now. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to let you finish loading in, and then I will. Uh, Thank you. Scene. Delete this stairs. I guess this keeping heart is with me now. And don't fail me now, TTS. So you reach the end of the staircase. Uh, you look back, you see Pontifex catching up with you guys and just uh, holding up a, a thumbs up. Uh, it seems like you have snuck past that creature uh, without a problem. And you are in a uh, somewhat dusty hallway um, with only one direction to go. You end up going around a corner uh, and then around another corner. There's a few uh, lit torches on the walls that seem to have been uh, freshly set up. Uh, and by the time you reach the, hen the end of the hallway, um, you are in a wide open, uh, very big area. Uh, there is this entire space that opens up ahead of you that goes further down. Uh, and there's walkways to your right and to your left that seem to lead to different little alcoves. And from where you're standing, you can see some, uh, what, what look like to, to, to be coffins in those alcoves. Uh, immediately, you notice the many creatures that are roaming uh, in this area. Uh, this, it's, what, what kind of gets your attention is that two of these creatures, uh, the, uh, similar to the ones uh, above ground, the ones that seem to be, to be hearts, uh, are fighting one another. Welcome to this map. Yes! Oh. Oh yeah. my god. Wow. These, that this is amazing. Well made. Oh. Are, Are these four textures this? white for anyone else? <gasps> No. Um, Might nothing's just be white me. for me. I'll relock. Everything's oh. white for me. 
This is beautiful. <laughs> Multi-tiered. That's really cool. <laughs> huh. I guess the stairs are somewhat white. Ah, uh, mismatching assets. <laughs> uh, you can place your tokens up here. Uh, if you haven't uh, re-enabled the auto-rise, you probably want to do it now. Up, up where? Oh, uh, like... This is the entrance, so yeah, you have arrived at this spot. Uh, so you can, oh. you now have a, like a view. Sorry, how do you do that again? Uh, I'll do it for you. It's right click, okay. uh, toggles, auto rise. There you go. So now we can bring it up here. This is epic. This is the corner. I'll be back behind everyone else. Every one single file. <laughs> which we which ones line. we're fighting? Uh, these two over here. Uh, there is another one that is completely still uh, down here um, and sort of like kind of a little deflated. It doesn't look to be um, conscious. It it's hard to tell if these things would even like sleep. Um, it might be dead. Is there a pool of blood? Um... You know what? Uh, there's plenty of lighting down here, and you do have an unobstructed view. Yes! There is blood that is pulling up behind it. Uh, beneath it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> What would you like to do? Talix is going to reach into his backpack and pull out his journal and start drawing. Uh, so what are the other hearts doing? Are they just sort of hovering there? Do they appear alerted to something? Do they not seem to mind that these two are fighting? <laughs> um, they are moving about. Uh, it would be a headache for me to do that, but imagine that they are looking around and some... Uh, this one uh, enters this alcove for a little bit. And then as you guys are still looking around, eventually you see it come out. Uh, this is in the process of sort of like moving uh, um, forward and back in front of these stairs. These two are fighting. Uh, this... Well... Oh, it almost feels like it's watching. Okay. Is there like another exit we can see? For more doors or... Something that looks like this entrance? With um, like an isolated room? In terms of... Uh, roll a perception check. Would I be able to like help him with this or something? Yeah, sure. We can. Everyone who's interested can roll. This map is so beautiful. This is really cool. I think I need to read. Oh. Okay. Good That's roll! It. Yep. The detail on the spider web is incredible. I am <laughs> yeah. so impressed. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's uh, resolution. Wait, While neither of you can spot uh, anything resembling the passageway that you came through, um, and Brooke in particular, you're pretty sure that, uh, as far as you can tell, there isn't another exit to this area, but something that you do notice is that where the two hearts are fighting uh, there is a lantern on the ground uh, knocked over and broken uh, that definitely doesn't match uh, the rest of the area and in fact you're pretty sure that's of Plurin and make you're looking for her I 
it realistically doesn't look like we're going to get uh, where we need to go without engaging with these things and I would presume based on their reactions to sound that when one shrieks they, one of them it. they all come yes so once we alert one it is a bit of a race against time we have to dispatch them as they come before we get overwhelmed are you suggesting that we take on this whole this whole place um, not suggesting i'm saying if we're going to progress to this place it seems like inevitability if friday is correct in that they deal with this shrieking business and we have seen how they react to sound they move to investigate if one if even one of them notices us the rest will come so in the event that this happens we need to either dispatch them quietly before they can react but we don't know how hardy they are or we have to defeat them as they come they don't seem to be able to fly so maybe these staircases are fortunate but this seems is going to be messy I could make a, a really loud distraction that should get their attention for a while. Maybe give us enough time to find um, Freda's partner. Could squeak. Uh, I don't know if they can see, but could he just turn invisible and scout out this place? Look for them? Yeah, sure, I could. I can try and look down there by the lantern, see if maybe she's hiding about. Give me just one hot potato second. If That's... we know where to go, it could make it yes. less risky. Yeah, okay. Squeak will turn visible and just try and like head down in this direction, maybe Wait, but through they one don't of these see. doorways. Well, we don't know. They seem to react to sound, but and like we don't see eyes, but you know, who knows? I need Squeak to roll a stealth check. Okay. <laughs> Any bonus to being invisible? No. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, tell us. Is... Ooh, good. Okay. Uh, Squeak is aiming to check this area, you said, right? I, th I I was gonna have him, like, peek through this side first to see if these rooms connected. Uh, so sure. So he didn't have to go between It the looks hearts. like each of these alcoves is uh, uh, its own little area. Uh, there's a wall separating them. Okay. Then, yes, he would try and, like, go between. Uh, these two, uh, they're, oh, aha, expenses, uh, the, they're, all right, I'm not going to bother with drunk. this too much, <laughs> one is drunk, um, as they're fighting, they're hating one another with the, their each respective, uh, tendril-like appendages, uh, and by the time the squeak kind of gets close to them, they're, um, they have each other wrapped, uh, against against their uh, between their own limbs, uh, it's almost like a hug, uh, but they are making this this noise uh, that is feels almost humanoid like, uh, like a crying voice, uh, like a pained uh, <laughs> oh no a, a pained scream <laughs> for help. Uh, squeak, whoops! Squeak cautiously stays uh, above them. Uh, almost, uh, almost touching the the ceiling above him, <laughs> uh, and he the can peaks. turn into a spider if he needs to like crawl along the ceiling. Ah! Whoops! It is oh not shit! Squeak. They found him. <laughs> <laughs> They're going ballistic. Yeah. Sorry, I I played with your toys and I can't believe it. I'm paying for it. 
Uh, but yeah, Squeak pe uh, pokes his, uh, his head in here. Um, and this alcove is as empty as the previous one. There's just uh, the one coffin. Okay. Uh, while Squeak is flying around, Talix is just going to double check and turn to Freda. Uh, do you know where she's being held? Uh, I also need Squeak to roll a perception check. Okay. Um, Freda shakes her head. Okay. Dang, these rolls. Okay. Um, as as uh, Squeak flew down uh, into this area, he noticed that some of these coffins are open, uh, such as Great. the one in this room. Uh, the one in this one isn't, uh, but he does spot some markings in the dust uh, that actually seem to, indica to indicate that very recently it uh. was open. <laughs> uh -huh. I, okay, I think Squeak would make an assumption based off of that and uh, try and return as quietly as possible. I don't know if I need to roll again or what, but... No, your stealth is better than their perception, <laughs> even though I rolled for it. Uh, and I think Squeak would say, All right, listen. I think that girl's hiding in that coffin over there. If we have any chance of getting her out of here, we're either going to need something very, very loud to keep them distracted, or we're going to have to take them all out. Those are our options. Think she's in a stone coffin? Yeah. How long How long have you been here, Fredo? Um... We've been separated for uh, many hours by now. Uh oh, that might be a crack in it, you know, so she can still breathe. I'm not gonna. Okay, okay. Let's hope so. Yeah, surely. Did that wall just move? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Fireball. I always find oh. little imperfections to fix. <laughs> this never ends. All right, uh, Squeak, how heavy did the coffins look like? Can one of us open it, or would need more for that? Uh, you probably could. All right. Not quietly, though. So what do we want to do? Really loud noises? Or fireball wipe them out now? I mean, if the professor was right... This staircase is the only way up. If we were to take them all on, what do we have for ranged weapons? Uh, uh, we have those, but I could also... Um, well, I could make these stairs a living hell. Uh, it, where it would be extremely difficult for them to get up, uh, slow them down. Uh, vibrate their organs out of their bodies and such if they have them uh, <laughs> so all of I suppose I could just be a dangerous nuisance but there is the one that is up here with us mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, I don't uh think that I could lock down the stairs but if, if someone was able to uh, just to hold them still uh, or worst case scenario or best case scenario if we could get them all relatively close to each other I might be able to just solve the problem there is a sudden very loud noise the screeching of stone grinding against stone uh, it's almost directly beneath your feet Tekka something very very heavy is being moved. We need to act now. Something approaches. Alright, is there a way to make sound from different locations? 
So Hippus. they all go. I can. Just only going at the feet. same time? Uh, no, one at the time, six second intervals. Hmm. Hip is going to uh, grab his doll, uh, give it a little shake in the air, and cast Major Image. And in a 20-foot cube over here uh, is going to create the image and sound of a woman, like, scampering up and down these walls, like, climbing up and down and up and down, just like weaving and bobbing and making a bunch of climbing noises. Huh. What wow. The, the range of major image. I mean, it's not minor illusion. It's not silent image. It's the big one. <laughs> it's a 120 feet, 20 foot cube. Okay. Uh, immediately, a loud screeching follows. Not coming from... Uh, uh, your spell, but coming from the heart that is uh, almost on the opposite side of the room compared to you. To see this one begin to move. Uh, and by the time this one comes out uh, and also begins to head that way, um, it is not a, it is not alone. Uh, there is another one that comes out from the same alcove uh, with it. Oh, once I fix the thing. There we go. And then Pip will like uh, sort of recess back a little bit and trying to get close to Pontifex and then just say if they all get really close together, mm. blast them. Okay, ev everyone get out of the way. <laughs> you know, move up, I guess. Uh, I think I had crazy range on it. Yeah, I have incredible range on this 150 feet. Uh, and yeah, he's gonna wait until as many of them get there as seem to be reacting. Uh, three of them are. Uh, these two are still fighting, but one of them uh, seems to be losing. Um, and its movements are getting more and more sluggish, uh, and it's beginning to, to collapse. Yeah. I am nothing if not greedy. Uh, and I guess I'm gonna use thaumaturgy uh, to put a sound like here or something to try to get these bottom ones close enough to maybe notice this commotion. I'm gonna try to lure them closer to it with thaumaturgy until they seem to. Thaumaturgy at a 30 foot range? Yeah. I uh, guess how... I, mean, I can even move along the top and put it like here uh, or something, you know? Yeah. How far away from me I can get it. Probably like more over here, but let me see. In any case, he's gonna try to stay on this top level to uh, use thaumaturgy to try to lure uh, these other two, not the fighting ones, but these other two, close to see if they can, see if they'll, they'll take the bait of Pip's thing. Uh, one does, and it's this one, who first approaches in this direction, then begins to head towards Pip's illusion. Okay, so Pontifex has to be like all the way over here for that to work, right? Well, I'm just trying to like get him floor. closer to the illusion before they're within range of hearing it and then maybe bite onto the illusion. Okay. Yeah, I'm not like having to put my thaumaturgy in his little major image, I'm assuming. Uh, but yeah, once they're all close enough to fit within a 20 foot sphere, a 20 foot radius sphere, so sorry, so 40 by 40. Uh, then yeah, he's gonna he's gonna rip it. I, I feel like we've <laughs> if anyone was going to object, they would have when Pip said to blast him. Um, is this the best you'll get? Okay, cool. Uh, if that all fits in the forty, then then cool. Uh, let's do it and let's what damage? I can choose between a lot: acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. Let's do the thumb. Okay, the best you can do is the top three yeah, ones. Uh, there is a difference of 20 feet in between each floor, uh, so you can't get mm. the one at the very bottom. Uh, then I will do that. I will rip a Thunderball. Uh, I'm going to cast Fireball. I'm going to change its damage type to Thunder. Uh, 150 foot range 
40 foot diameter sphere. Okay. Uh, uh, they it's all a save for me, yes. Do I, yeah, it's a save from all of them. Uh, DC 16 dexterity save. Let me roll all the damage. Um, I have one success and two failures. Okay. This much. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 37 <laughs> on fails, 18s on successes of thunder damage. Maybe the... Maybe their sound sensitivity will help us. Um. Okay, thirty-seven on a failure. And eighteen on a success. Hey, maybe the sound's loud enough to draw the others. have everything within arm's reach. Here we go. Um, this was lightning? Uh, thunder. 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 All right. So. He's hoping that their sound sensitivity will, the, will help. The sound of the explosion, it shakes the entire underground building. Um, you can see uh, up on the ceiling, there is like bits of roots growing through and even the uh, the very tips of the uh, the rib cage of the dragon, and you can see everything, all the plant matter shaking a little bit along with uh, with the explosion-like noise. Uh, some of these uh, uh, beings are just thrown against the walls, uh, one nearly falling to the floor below uh, from from the impact uh, of Pontifex's spell, and uh, every single creature in here, each one of these hearts. Um, those that you can, those that you can see, and that seem to be still alive, uh, all in unison, they scream. The sound it it rattles your bones. It feels simultaneously very human and nothing uh, human-like, uh, but it does fill you with this sense of dread and despair. Uh, each of them survives, but uh, uh, a couple of them are barely holding themselves together. Uh, we're going to roll initiative. Yep. Uh, and uh, right. we'll, we'll continue from here. I think it's the second fireball he's ever used. The first one was at the mage thing. Mm -hmm. Good spell. <laughs> Fireball is a good spell. <laughs> yeah, like in all of my years of playing 5e, I've ever never actually cast Fireball. Ever. Uh, so yeah, I've, and I've never actually used it against like targets before. So this is the first time in all of my years that ever Fireball a group of enemies. That feels good. That's a lot of dice. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, it was a good roll too. I said the initiative list is so long that it's going beyond the board. <laughs> oh, 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 supposed to contain it. I don't do the scene. Uh, I haven't loaded it yet. There we go. Now, uh, just how do I set my own initiative again? Oh. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Uh, just missing uh, the Tresson. Yeah. I'm not used to that. This is the first combat Tresson. <laughs> She's back. She's... Uh, and they have two. So now... There we go. Hey yo. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm winding up another <laughs> one. Give me a bit. <laughs> uh, Pekka, it's your turn. Yeah, so first of all, I think Tekka will use the cloth 
uh, he used while traveling through the dust cloud. And he's going to stuff his ears with that and then wrap a bandage around it to sort of soften the impact of that screech if mm -hmm. it happens again. And then, would it be possible for Tekka to leap off the side of this staircase down to this level? Uh, it's a 20 foot drop. Uh, I yeah. would ask for a check. Uh, it will hurt regardless, but it would hurt less. Uh, of course, unless you have anything that prevents that, but there will be some falling damage, fall damage involved. Uh, well, there, oh, yeah. There is something called slow fall. I'm going to call it graceful fall that reduces fall damage by 30. Oh. Yeah, it's this will not say, hurt monks, you. <laughs> yeah, monks do that. Uh, you know how to like uh, how to roll uh, as soon as you hit the floor, and uh, uh, it does not hurt your ankles. Anime uh, slide down the wall of these stairs. <laughs> now that you're down here, you can see that this coffin is currently open and empty. Sorry, did you say it was open or? It's open and empty. Okay. Uh, and sorry, which music. was the coffin that uh, that Squeak said? Is it this one back here by these two that we're fighting? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that is like a turn. Okay. Do I remember how to move to the next turn? Oh, I do. Here we go. In a little bit. Um, so, of course, the one that's on our level is the one that got good initiative. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pekka, mm -hmm. earlier, um, I asked for a wisdom check, yeah, um, and that was meant to be how, um, how emotional you were feeling uh, at the time as you were entering the script. Um, so Tekka obviously had something on his mind. Well, what was he thinking about? Gosh. Hmm. There are two directions I could take this. I don't know which is more interesting. Huh. Oh, don't, don't overthink it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with... I think having that moment of Talix just suddenly being gone, like off the treetops and no one in the party noticed, kind of like reflecting on sort of the frailty of this group that something could split us. Mm. Uh, and you were worried for him. For the whole group. Uh, yeah. I, I do remember you were the one who climbed on the tree to check on him and you just found yeah. part of his hardness left behind. Yes. Um, and uh, Tekka, this, this worry, uh, it's still at the, at the forefront of your mind, uh, but you're focused. Um, you notice uh, that there is a movement uh, uh, to, the, to the floor beneath you. you, you it's barely uh, within your view, uh, mainly because you're keeping, uh, you're trying to stay aware of your surroundings. And that's how you notice that one of the tendrils uh, uh, of this heart shoots up towards you, extending further than you would have thought possible. Um, does a 19 hit Tekka? That, I believe it does. Okay. Um, you take... What's on reaction? Jason? Oh, sorry, the, the, the heart. This, this heart, right? Uh, oh, right, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Tekka, you take uh, um, seven points of piercing damage as one of these tendrils um, shoots into you, um, manages to get uh, uh, wrapped around one of your arms and pulls you all the way over this this uh, uh, wall and down at its level. Oop. Okay, there we go. Uh, you're currently grappled by it. 
Um, and this, this sensation of worry within you is growing uh, larger and larger. Not worry because you're being wrapped by this thing, but because it's you are it's just overwhelming. Uh, you're so concerned for the rest of your party that you kind of lose sight of your uh, of your own uh, the danger you are in uh, for a moment. Uh, next, uh, now react to our order. This one. Uh, appears. Well, begins to move. Um, and it's chasing after the the image that Pip has created. Um, and despite reaching for it, uh, it doesn't manage to grab it. But you see. Uh, the, the rest of you see, uh, again, it's trying to attack with these tendril-like uh, appendages. Uh, let's say it's over here now. Okay. Uh, Squeak just saw Tekka being dragged one floor below. Yeah. Um, I think Squeak is going to uh, immediately take this opportunity to fly on down. And if he can reach, land on top of the heart. Okay. Just say, uh, let go of my friend! Aw, oh, the friends? Eh. <laughs> Only in times <laughs> of danger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Why is it cute? <laughs> no. Uh, what is he doing? Uh... Well, <laughs> well, he has to wait till Pip's turn to attack, so... Okay. <laughs> just, um, like, preparing the, the stinger. <laughs> then we move on to the other little companion. Uh, yeah, she's going to... Uh, fuck that, she's going to stay with Pontifex for now. Yeah. Okay, Talix. Um, well... One moment you saw Tekka cl uh, climb down this wall, and the next you saw right. him flying over the. I mean, yeah, Talos this doesn't really notice what's happening. It's really like kind of moves up behind and tries to get ready for what's going on, and then looks down and like, oh, where did Tekka go? <laughs> <laughs> and sees that situation. <laughs> uh, then he's just gonna yell, Tekka! And um, unfortunately, Talos doesn't really have any range. Uh, capabilities that can help. He's just going to uh, start to run down these stairs and assume that his companions are coming with him. Okay. Uh, can I can I dash downstairs or yeah. is that too difficult? No, no, these stairs do not count as difficult terrain. Just go for it. All right. Um, all right, yeah, he dashed, he'll stop about here and then, like, think about his next move. And that's it for now. Okay. But he, do he does have his uh, shield and his stick out right. for now. Oh, look whose turn it is. No! <laughs> uh, Tekka. Mm -hmm. You need to roll... Oh, wait, no, not yet. Sorry. Uh, so, now that you are... Oh, Jesus. Now that you are um, up against this thing, it's, uh, it's, its flesh is, is wet. There is blood on you that isn't yours. Um, and it's, uh, it's an overall very uncomfortable feeling, and it's cold. Um, it's the... the uh, the blood that belongs to this creature is just very cold. Uh, like, uh, it's it's like... Uh, wow, I have lost completely my sentence. Anyway, you are cold and Talix is getting hit. Ah, uh, maybe, we'll see. Uh, that is a dirty 20 to hit Talix. That'll do it. Uh, so another one of these tendrils shoots up to him. And you are dragged down uh, on the opposite side from uh, from Tekka. And I take falling damage in uh, addition. You do. Uh, that's seven bludgeoning damage. 
And the damage the from... Yes, that's a fall. And the damage from the hit is uh, uh, 5 piercing. Now both of you need to roll, roll wisdom saving throws. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I... Oh, right. It's gonna re. Don't re. But I, I got the thing around my ears. That's gonna save me. <laughs> Might not be a screech. Uh oh. Sid, no, you're not supposed to roll those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, that's illegal. Becca, um, or rather, Sid, can you roll a d8 for me? Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. On a one, you die, so. Oh, this is like a madness. Sid! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sid, stop that. What is. Double ones, huh? Mm -hmm. It's my job, not yours. <laughs> okay. Um, one, two, three. This was a terrible way of doing this. This music's epic. It's really good. It's number seven. All right, Becca. Yeah. Uh, this thing screams. Um, those of you who have protected your ears, uh, the, the scream is less painful, but each of you is just hit by this wave of dread. Uh, no, when it, at the start of its turn, it regained its, its reaction, so it dragged you down as well. Uh, but uh, it would have pulled me down before its turn. No, it was uh, on its turn. Oh, that's so that, okay. All right, fine. Um, this scream is painful, and you're each hit by this wave of dread and pain and sorrow. Um, it almost feels like it's drilling into your skull. No, who started it? It started on its own. Okay. Not me this time. <laughs> um, Tekka, you take four points of psychic damage. All right. Um, and the entire area, it just kind of fades out of view. Um, and you're... You're no longer here beneath stilling dread. You're no longer in the deadly embrace of this heart creature. You are currently rubbing one of your claws against a stone wall. You're scratching it over and over and over until your finger bleeds and you leave a distinct mark. This is another day counted and forgotten, at least until your cell door opens. You turn around and shield your eyes from the sudden sunlight. Uh, your movement is accompanied by the metallic tinkling of the chains weighing down your wrists. When the figure in the doorway makes you an offer, you accept it without a second thought, driven by desperation and unending pain. Anything to make this suffering stop. The next thing you become aware of are the tears streaming down your cheeks and you begin to distinguish between uh, what is real and what isn't. And you're aware again of what's going on around you and the situation you are in. But what you just experienced, it felt like it was, uh, it felt like less of a vision and more of a memory. Although, it wasn't you, it wasn't your hands, it wasn't the color of your skin, it wasn't a place you had ever been in before, and it wasn't really your thoughts either. Back to the fight. Brooke! <laughs> okay. I will dash down. Can I jump the little one, or do I have to go Oh, uh, Sure, that's fine. That's one, and then... Ah, oh, yes, landing on the stairs. 
<laughs> I'm still on the stairs. Uh -huh. Kinda. <laughs> okay, that's my turn. Okay. Pip. All right. So the bonus action is going to be squeak attacking the heart. Squeak attack. Squeak attack. Is it with advantage, or does it not care that Squeak's invisible? Uh, it is not an advantage. Gotcha. Okay. Then... Uh... Huh. I'm forgetting how to play D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, here it comes. Squeak doesn't happen to be flanking in Ugh. any permutation, does it? Well, uh, it's no, the 12 misses. <laughs> oh, Stinger just sort of like slicks off of its gross, slimy surface. And uh, Squeak just, just like, eh, there's three of you, you don't need me here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's going to fly over here. Okay, I think it's 45 feet. Or is it 40? It's 40. So squeaks over to here. Okay. Um and then so that was that was Pip's bonus action. Um as an action, Pip just steps over here five feet and is going to cast Create Bonfire right here, which will if any of these hearts decide to move closer, they'll get in the fire and be burned. Uh, it is concentration, so this goes away. Okay. And then Pip's going to slide on over this direction. Just here. Alright. Unfortunately, I have a whole lot of turns uh, <laughs> in a row. Oh, but wait. This boy isn't supposed to be in initiative. Yeah, because uh, this one is dead. Uh, so actually... Spoilers, we didn't know that. <laughs> You're about to find out. It's not moving. So it's it is sleeping. an initiative. It just doesn't do anything on its turn. Let's see. It's a sleeping heart. <laughs> Sleeping hearts, sleeping hearts. <laughs> Things only faint. Um, as mentioned, at this point, uh, Speak's invisibility doesn't really seem to be helping him out. Um, although I will. Oh no, he's I not invisible not. anymore anyway. Oh, he's not anymore either. Yeah, because he attacked. Okay. Oh, that's true. Okay. Uh, with its opponent defeated, this particular heart uh, begins to move in this direction. Um, Squeak just like flattens himself against the wall, <laughs> just hoping. Uh, Squeak was reasonably emotionally sound uh, earlier. Uh, and this heart. Uh, Hard to does spot him though. Uh, does. Whoops. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, a nine doesn't hit him. No. Okay. Um. Ooh, but. Or. What's this? <coughs> um. Hey. Okay. Um, <laughs> what was Brooke thinking about earlier? Because uh, he was also seemed to be emotionally uh, involved with what was going on as he uh, walked down the, the stairs at the entrance. What was on his mind? Uh, mainly the danger that is ahead of him and the group, since I have no idea what they're getting into. Mm hmm. And just to sort of making it back out as a group again, at any cost. Um, your your worries, your emotions, uh, just are pressing really hard against the back of your skull. 
um, that's the main thing you're thinking about, then usually you're very, you're very cautious, very aware of your surroundings, very prepared for the very dangerous, the very danger that you're worried about. Um, and yet, it feels like you don't see this coming uh, until the very last possible second. Ooh. Does a 17 hit him? Nope. Okay. Um, your your focus was was broken, uh, but your instinct still kicked in, and you barely felt something behind you. You duck, and something hits just the top of your hair, um, and you you glance back to see that this creature had just tried to grab you uh, and drag you across this uh, uh, this chasm. Oh, that would have been fun. Um, nine. With nothing left here to focus on, it's coming this way. And this does damage when it walks through, right, Austin? It will have to make a dex save. Nine. Okay, that's a fail, so it takes 2d8. Fire damage. Nice, 13. Good roll. Okay, good damage. Uh, can you keep it moving? Yeah. Then. Uh, which of these? Sorry, which of these three hearts was the one that failed the fireball? Uh, which one took the, blunt, the brunt of it? The two of, two them, of them, them did. The this one was the one I did best. Then oh, one. Oh, two fails, one success. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and then it will keep on moving. Enough. Uh, Talix. Hmm? Sorry, I was reading my own notes. Uh, Pon what was on Pontifex's mind earlier? Um, probably disregarding everyone except for Talix. Uh, there's that moment where Talix kind of like left his hat, left his gear, and ran off on his own on the back of a wyvern, and then the reconnection and the slap and stuff. Uh, and so he he's worried that Talix makes impulsive, emotionally charged decisions, and that the only reason we're really helping this lady is mostly because of him, and that Pontifex is afraid that now that Talix knows where this person might be, uh, he might put himself in unnecessary danger to deal with it. So it's mostly just concerned for specifically Talex because he sees him as being young and impulsive. Uh, with these thoughts at the forefront of your mind, it almost feels like they are loud. You can almost hear yourself thinking uh, in your own ears. And as you glance down at Talex, worrying for him, uh, that's just in time... Wait, no! A 12 hits you, doesn't it? Yeah, I have a comically low AC. Uh, wait, is this an attack roll? Yeah. Am I able to cast shield? You can. Yeah, I'll you. Uh, I'll do it with my my stick. Okay. Um, you looking down at Talix is basically the thing that lets you spot this uh, for uh, at the very very last moment, uh, and your your staff kind of interposes between uh, yourself uh, and the uh, the appendage that was about to grab you, and you deflect it at the very last possible second. Whoa. Um, I'm pretty sure I got flustered earlier and I didn't ask Talix what he was thinking. Um, I think the, uh, the message is coming through from the rest of the team to Talix that, that they disagree with his, uh, his taking on of things like this, but usually I think he receives that as uh, they kind of doubt his own abilities to deal with situations. They kind of... Uh, he feels like... He feels like he's constantly being told that he... He just isn't as capable as everyone else, or maybe that's just him, his own uh, 
his own inner thoughts, but he just wants to prove that he can do actual good in this situation, and but at the same time, there's like this deep fear deep within that he's trying to fight that, you know, maybe maybe that feeling's right. Maybe he's about to let everyone here down and whatever happens that's just the one thing he needs to know he needs to prove wrong um it was right at the moment when doubts had begun to to surf to resurface uh they were starting to worry that maybe he was about to to prove them uh his companions right uh that the the heart managed to grab him and pull him down um, everything else has moved, and I'm, I'm rolling the deck save for this heart, which is 18. Uh, does the fire do half damage or none, Austin? Uh, none. Okay. Uh, then it finishes its movement. Freda approaches and sees the situation, and does not contribute. Hunt <laughs> effects. Uh, yeah. The 9 and 4 are both ones that got uh, blasted before. Let's... Is this one that hits extra targets? It is. I had a plan, and then they all moved out. Ain't that just how it be? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. He's going to... Uh, he's gonna do his his wub wub sphere, uh, the flaming sphere. Uh, I think my damage type for what I can do. Uh, yeah, I can't do thunder anymore for that one. So let's do lightning. Uh, I'm gonna put the the sphere, I guess, right here. Oh, I you still have the token? Yes. Uh, right there, uh, mm -hmm. but it is lightning damage, uh, so this is my action to cast it, and then I'm going to bonus action to smash it into this heart number nine. Okay. Uh, it needs to make a 16 deck save. Four. Yeah, that is a fail. Uh, for eight points of lightning damage. Okay, got it. Um, now this one too uh, seems to be in a very, very rough shape. Uh, your spell has definitely managed to to just scramble it up from the inside, um, and its uh, heart-shaped form is barely being held together. Uh, uh. Alex. I need a wisdom saving throw from you. Okay. Okay. Twenty-one. Um, your vision almost fades for a moment, but you—it uh, almost felt like you were about to lose consciousness. But but you're fine. Uh, anything else from Pontifex? Yeah, and then Pontifex is going to move. Uh, Thirty, because now he's not crazy slow with the armor. Uh, okay. And that is that's my action, bonus action, and movement. Uh, each of the uh, screams uh, every time they fill the room. Uh, you can you can feel them just reverberate inside of your own skulls. Uh, this. Just being near them feels painful and a little disorienting. Uh, Tekka, you're looking over at this one that, that is holding you in what almost feels like an embrace. Um, and you have this weird sense of familiarity with it. Uh, and almost pity. Uh, you 
understand its struggles. Go ahead and take your turn. Oh. So how is the tendril holding tech at the moment? Uh, it's wrapped all the way around you, um, like around your, your torso. Uh, and it's ending at the, uh, one of your arms, but it's it's free. You're free to uh, move your limbs uh, as you wish. You just can't. Uh, your speed is zero. Okay. Um, yeah, I think Tekka dealing with the, the reverberating screams, this, these emotions, that memory, um, he will try to fall to the floor and claw his way closer to Brooke, sort of reminiscent of that memory. Brooke, do not leave us! You can't go! And yeah, he'll try to pull away from this tendril, but I don't know how much resistance there will be. Um, I'll just ask for your choice of an athletics or acrobatics check. I think athletic. Yeah, athletic sense here. Because it's, it's just about pulling. It's not like trying to maneuver away. Uh, okay. Eighteen is enough. And yeah, uh, as Tekka crawls away on the stone <laughs> floor, continuing to scratch into the stone floor, uh, I think he'll just like grab onto one of Brooke's legs. Brooke, their cries, their cries break, break flame. Stay near. And that is Tekka's turn. Okay. Uh, number three. That's it. Squeak! Okay. Uh-huh. I think that um, I think that Squeak and Pip share a sort of telepathic idea, and Squeak is going to disengage from this heart and just say, "Come on, come and get me!" And that's going to be his turn. All right. The other cutie pie in the party. Yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, some sometimes during Pontifex's thing, uh, whenever he's kind of drawing things over there, he's like mentally telling her to like, go check the coffin, uh, and she's gonna fly. You gonna stay up high and start to head that way. Hold on. Uh, so she's gonna move uh, eighty in the direction of that. Th oh, she can just do it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yes, she can. Oops. One. You want her in that room? Yeah, and right. Then... Yeah, right click. And... Oh. Well, there you go. Kind of okay. exactly. There you go. Oop. Damn it. Yeah, you have to right click. Well, oh, yeah, there you go. I see. Genius. There she is, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it seems like there's actually a collision in there. So you can't she is go. in the room, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's in there. Uh, is she a... I guess she has a passive perception of 15. Is, is she able to get anything? If there's a person in there? Um, 
Oh, actually, at this at this time. Uh, that's right. Uh, Squeak and the Tressim both notice. Uh, Squeak as he flies by and uh, the Tressim as she's uh, specifically looking into this room that uh, uh, the lid of the coffin is currently in the process of sliding off. Aha. Hmm. Okay. Can she see, like, a hand or something that's sliding it off? Um, she spots greenish fingers. That's fine. She was an orc, I'm sure. <laughs> we didn't ask this question, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's all the Jessam. Okay. Alex? So I'm being grappled. Mm-hmm. Are my arms pinned? Can I still... You can move them. I haven't been, like, brain bunned or anything, so I can... Yeah. Uh, so I'm still my normal self. I'm going to try to break out of this somehow. Uh, this heart's flanked, right? Yeah. Going to try to draw my dagger and slash this thing. Okay. At advantage, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. 15 hits. Uh, good. So... It's a big, uh, I, soft, I'm gonna, unprotected target. Yeah, I'm gonna... I just added D6 to it, because I'm just a baby rogue. <laughs> Aww. <gasps> Alright. Sneak attack is out. Is this the first time? Uh, against oh, crap. the Brook. Against the ever actually sneak Against the Brook, he sneak attacked uh, that one time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly fire sneak attack. Yeah, How there do we you go. remember that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, look there at that. Is. Oh, my boy. I'm capable yeah. and I'm going to prove it. <laughs> uh, Alex is. Um, to Alex. Alex is forgetting his anatomy lessons. <laughs> and his name. Yeah. He's a little rusty. I was only told to stab them in the heart, but what if it's, what if it's just all heart? <laughs> Um, but, but Tekka, Tekka kind of feels it, like he feels the pain, uh, that the, uh, that the weeping prisoner has just felt, um, and it, it clears your mind, uh, a little bit, you don't actually share the damage, but, um, if, for, for role-playing purposes, uh, um, Tekka feels a little better. Wait, I'm sorry. I just noticed this thing is called something different. Is is there something visually distinct about this one? No, but now Tekka knows it. Oh, that will change the name. Yeah, it uh, anything else from it, Alex? Its name changed after oh. the brain exchange. Uh, <laughs> brain exchange. It's my favorite DS game. Um, no. Uh, no. That's it. Does it that help me get ungrappled at all, or am I still stuck? Um. Oh, actually, no. It, it requires your action to free yourself. Okay. Uh, which brings us to uh, this one. Um, who is uh, set on? Uh, trying to get the uh, Tekka back. Oh no! Oh no! See, the oh, escape! Oh, it's oh, gone too far! <laughs> um, Sid, can you still hear us? Oh no! No, there it goes. Luckily a 10 misses, so we can move on. <laughs> Great! Um, I'm sure a 10 misses. Yeah, his uh, yeah. his AC sixteen, I think. Um, and uh, nothing else. Oh wait, actually, I was wrong. Uh, Stalix hurt it. I need to take better. Uh... Oh no no, we're done. I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> that's yeah, that's the end of its turn. That's everything I did had to do. He tried to uh, grab Tekka and pull him pull him back towards it, but uh, failed to do so. Uh, Brooke, Tekka is acting really weird. Yeah, he's a bit confused, but all he sees is <coughs> two of his group members being hurt. So he goes around <coughs> that thing, and I think at first he will slash himself for 1d6. That's a bonus action and activate a crimson right. And it's a right of the dawn, so the extra damage will be radiant. Okay. And then. God, I can't change the HP. I'll do it for you. Oh, oh never I mind. Can't. You lied to me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I will start attacking it. In... Sorry. 23 hits. Okay. The second number is the radiant damage. So 12 flashing and 5 piercing, uh, 5 radiant. And then a second attack. Oh. 15 also hits. Nice. That's 10 slashing and 5 radiant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you approach from the side, going around Tekka. Um, and uh, bringing your focus on this enormous heart, you start stabbing. Uh, blood pours out, your, your blows uh, deadlier than what Alex just inflicted it. Uh, and it's... <laughs> I didn't mean to throw shade, though, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> somehow... <laughs> um, and you... Brooke, um, you almost feel sad. Like, you're almost taking pity on this thing, but uh, that that feeling is uh, kind of alien in your mind, and you push it aside, and you pull the blade out of it, uh, out of the creature, uh, and it is uh, fairly still alive. Okay. <coughs> That's my turn. Okay. Sid, you're back with us? Yep, yep, yep. All right. Um, I don't know where you lost us, but um, Alex and Brooke have been damaging this heart, and Tekka feels more clear-headed now. Um, and there was a swipe at Tekka, but it missed. Unless a 10 hits for some reason. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All right, then we move on to Pip. Uh, Pip's turn. All right. So Pip is going to move over here. Here. Uh, yep, that perspective works out. Don't sure. worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as a bonus action, Pip is going to uh, cast a hand over towards this weeping heart over here and just use telekinesis to try and push it back five feet. Push it away? Yes, push it away. Uh, it's a strength save. Uh, 19. That's success. That's a success. It doesn't move back. Uh, but then Pip is going to hold his action for when this one over here moves and Squeak gives a telepathic signal. Okay. As Squeak is just saying, hey, come on, come on. <laughs> and it is its turn. Um... Uh, however, uh, despite Squeak's attempts, 
Uh, what is luring this particular creature is not Squeak's voice. Uh, and instead it will proceed to uh, come around the steps and towards Brook. Then uh, in that still, case... That should still it, trigger it, your reaction. Yeah, if Squeak is still seeing it go the other way, then Pip will cast the bonfire directly in front of it as it's moving. Okay. Dexterity save? Yep. Three! All right. 2d8. That's a fun usage of bonfire. Ten. Bang. Okay, this is on this one. First damage you test. Underrated taken. spell. Uh, the other one goes away. It's concentration, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then it dashes... And he gets all the way next to Brew. What's he gonna try? Uh, we'll find out soon. Uh, which one is nine? Oh, here we are. Uh, does something happen with the sphere, Pontifex? On its turn? Uh, uh, no, uh, it is only whenever I smash it in into it, or when it ends its turn. Next. What about passing through? <coughs> no, nothing happens. Apparently. Okay. You're off. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Yeah, no, I don't In think anything turn. happens. Uh, okay. I assume that it can move through it. What's this book called again? Uh, Flaming Sphere. Um, yeah, from from that blob in the chat, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that that was only like twenty percent of the chat of the text. I guess there's a character limit. Oh, new sphere. Uh. Yeah, skimming it, it looks like it doesn't do anything like when somebody walks through. Yeah, it looks uh, like you right. can walk and through. And it is heading towards uh, Freida, who, um, and that's appropriate, definitely had a lot on her mind earlier, especially emotionally speaking. Uh, it had to dash to get up here. Oh, this reaction hasn't been used on her yet. Uh, let's see, I believe uh, it grabs her. Uh, it sure does. All right, well, she's grappled. Uh, and she experiences something, so I guess I will roll for this one. Oh, hey, it's... what's it rolled? Uh, we roll. Um, and you hear Freida scream and then cry. Um, this one down here. Did it, like, visibly do anything to her? Is it, like, grabbing her? Or? Uh, it's grabbing her and it's, uh, it's screeching at her. Um, but her, her crying feels like less one of pain and just one of sadness. Um... <laughs> Pekka uh, This one is going to try to attack you from a distance Alright <laughs> So not 20 <laughs> Oh damn uh, okay. Pekka is, <laughs> has successfully tumbled all the way down <laughs> from the very top floor uh, to this one, uh, as he had just freed himself uh, from <laughs> from the grasp of this one, and then ends up down here um, for a grand total of 11 uh, piercing damage and. A wisdom saving throw. Okay. Attacker. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. Um, you just... You end up... Uh, Alright, so you're dragged down into the bottom floor. Uh, and you barely manage to land in a way that doesn't hurt you too much. Um, now you are uh, being grabbed by a different heart. And this one feels different. Like, like a different individual. Like it has a different personality. And it's going through something different. Um, but even as it screams at your face, uh, this time you steer yourself uh, and you focus on yourself and on your surroundings and the here and now, uh, and you don't lose yourself. Who's uh, over here? Pontifex. Mm -hmm. 15 to hit you. Uh, yeah. Uh, you are pulled down from the floor you're on. You fly right over your own uh, elemental sphere. Uh, and you land inches away from it. Uh, you take 6 Dang. bludgeoning damage from the fall. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction to cast slow fall. Oh! Is that different from Featherfall? Or not Slowfall, sorry, Fet. Okay. Uh, choose up to five falling creatures within range, just me. Uh, right. My rate dis descent slows, uh, and I, <laughs> I don't take fall damage. Uh, it, it's like you're putting up some resistance against the yeah. appendage that just grabbed you. Uh, and you kind of gently hover towards it. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, it's like, no, 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 I don't want to. <laughs> it's hug it. is very soft. <laughs> it's like on the magic boosters to slow it down. Uh, you do still take the uh, five, uh, no, sorry, four piercing damage from the blow. Mm. Uh, and I only need a wisdom saving throw. Your thingies, they're gone. Sorry, there they are. Uh, wisdom. Uh, and actually, sorry, I think I have a racial thing for this. Um, is this... Uh, oh, it's not spells, it's just all of them. Uh, I have advantage on this. Oh, it doesn't matter. Well, now you pass. <laughs> uh, you, you're, you're, your mind uh, is very focused uh, right now, and... Uh, Despite the sudden situation that you find yourself in, you're staying, um... Uh, you're staying focused? Uh, Freda has a dagger. But... Oh, I told you. Look at her. Um... Freda manages to move past whatever was just bothering her. Um, she uh, regains control of her own emotions and uh, manages to uh, to unsheath the admittedly kind of small knife she has with her and then straight up whiff with it <laughs> Pontifex uh, so three, six, or three, four, and nine are the ones that I got that I fireballed earlier uh three, four, nine, yes Okay, uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to send my elemental spear up and smash into not because uh, it can, it can climb and leap gaps apparently. <laughs> so I'll put it like, uh, ooh, probably not there. It's the wrong one. That's like, <laughs> and there it go. <laughs> Uh, this, this was secretly yeah, actually, a Marvel no, I wouldn't be able course. to do that. Yeah, because if I do that, it's going to roast for... Uh, wait, no, that's only if she ends turn. Uh, okay. Move it up there and smash it into heart number nine. So DC 16 deck save. Six. So it's going to take this much. Five points of lightning. Five? Just five. Okay. Um, 
Well, this heart is still alive, but it looks like <laughs> it it's not going to be for long. It's okay. Uh, and then for my actual action, uh, I'm going to uh, <laughs> upcast a Tasha's Mind Whip uh, on the one next to me and on number three. Uh, they only have to be within 30 feet of each other. Uh, so they both have to make a DC 16 int save. Intelligence save. Which ones? Uh, four and three. The one in front of me and the one uh, up by the oh, fire. Oh, they both fail. Uh, so... Image. For sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of... Uh, so they're going to take this damage. Uh, they cannot take reactions until the end of their next turns. Uh, assuming they're both alive. Uh, Do either of them survive 19? 19. Uh, and it's psychic like damage is. if it matters. Uh, they are both fried. <laughs> They're all heart, no mind. <laughs> uh, what does that spell look like? Uh, so Pontifex has shown like he has some uh, semblance of like mental psionic ability. Uh, like he's used the his cantrip before to like give people headaches basically, and he mm -hmm. reads people's thoughts and all that. Uh, this is him basically learning to like weaponize the the innate psionic abilities that he has. Uh, I'm just attributing it to like his race or something. Okay. Uh, and so he's kind of combined it with his wizardly studies to figure <coughs> out how to weaponize this thing. Uh, and I think it's him like invading their minds as per reading their thoughts, uh, and then basically finding like a fragile point and like breaking it, just kind of attacking okay. the psyche. That's awesome. All right. Now I needed two wisdom so, saving throws from you. I don't know if there's like an actual visual to everyone else, but in Pontifex's <laughs> mind, there is. He sees it. Um, I need two wisdom saves and you you just roll them at advantage because it's unconditional, right? Uh, I do roll right? them at advantage, yeah. All right. Uh, so here's the first one. And the second Passes. Uh, oh. Sorry, Added. you need to wait it out until the dice are yeah. cleared. Yeah. And that passes. Okay. Um, both of them screeching uh, as they die. Uh, the, the tendrils wrapped around your body let go of you and slowly fall to your feet. Uh, each of these hearts uh, stops moving. Uh, and then he is going to. How far? This is probably dumb. No, that's dumb. Uh, he's gonna move. Hmm. Did these railings seem to seem to do anything with the being pulled, or no? Uh, if anything, they kind of crumbled. Okay. Uh, so five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, he'll just move to there. Uh, and he's probably shouting out for, uh, for Frida to uh, move away from the lightning, lest it, uh, it do the thing. Good <laughs> luck. Uh, all right. Let me check on something very quickly. Before we get to Tekka. Thank goodness. Okay. Uh, Tekka, you can take your turn. I'm just going to be removing three and four from the initiative in the meanwhile. Okay. Um, so, yeah. For the first time in a few seconds at least. Tekka feels some semblance of himself again. And yeah, Hole tightens the hold on his quarter staff as he looks up on this heart. And still feeling those feelings from whatever faint memory that must have been. And as he's about to swing the core staff, there is a, a moment of 
hesitation. Holding this core staff back. Before he tightens his teeth and strikes. Uh, and let's do some damage. Twelve misses. Okay. It's well, still a little bit of hesitation behind your strike. Yeah. And Tekka noticed this that there was almost like a flinch in his arch as he swung. As if he he couldn't really express his attack fully. And realizing that, uh, I think he's just going to uh, bend his knees and prepare to await whatever comes next. And I'll use dodge action. Because you can do it as a bonus action, can you? Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. If that's everything, then it's that Quick's turn. Everything. Okay. Uh, can I make it? Yes. Squeak's going to fly over here to this heart. Um, sort of, again, landing on top and uh, just saying to Tekka, All right, come on. We got this, buddy. And uh, it's just going to wait there until Pip's turn. I guess he'll take... I guess he can take an action. Uh, uh, dodge action. <laughs> That's it. Whoops. Uh, that brings us to the Tresim. Oh, uh, yeah, now that she. Since that brings us to the Tresim, um, she sees the lid of the coffin fully. Uh, push to the side, and everybody hears the faraway rumble of something made of stone hitting the ground. Um, and the, the little winged cat makes eye contact with uh, a humanoid figure climbing out of it and uh, dusting off uh, uh, their outfit. Uh, okay. Uh, do they hurt? Do they what? Do they look injured? Um, no. Okay. Uh, then I guess the, the Tresum is, is going to be a, a cautious as one would expect, so they're going to just take the dodge at, uh, and also back up to kind of, like, give them room, uh, mm -hmm. but she's also a little curious, but that's it. Alex, you are still in the grasps of this heart. Right. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, counting verticality, Talix is just barely out of range for something for Tekka. Um, now, I know my movement speed is zero. Is there any way that I could try to like throw my weight maybe with a strength check or something and try to get this thing to turn with me so that even if I'm like over the edge here oh oh that's weird even if I'm like why why is it snapping to that I can't even if I'm like you over be here dangling off. yeah even if I'm dangling off the edge just to get within that little distance to get closer to Tekka okay uh, so normally this would require an action to break free of the grapple, but since you're just asking to basically move uh, five feet just by turning it, uh, I would like to take a check without using up your action. Uh, so make Thank it you. an athletics check. Athletics, I'm proficient in that. This should go well. Oh, hey. okay. Not too bad. 
uh, which is more than what it rolled. Uh, you okay. are dangling off the edge. Ooh, I'll just, like, boom. Oh, I can't lock! I'm not, a, not allowed to lock. Oh no, you're not allowed. I'll lock it. I'll place it on the floor below. I'll move it. Here, lock it there. It's in the perfect spot. There we go. <laughs> Alright. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> Sal's just going to kind of cry out, uh, Zeka, you don't get hurt, you fool! And, uh, he's going to cast Aura Vitality. And, uh, so that's the action, and then with that spell, I, you, everyone are within 30 feet of Talix might notice just like a slight, a slight change in the atmosphere, like maybe even sort of a pleasant sort of twinge it makes your hairs want to stand up on end or something. But I'm going to use my bonus action to channel that energy towards Tekka and heal for 2d6. Woo! There Ooh, you go. Yeah. Tekka heals 11. Like for a moment, it almost feels like you're outdoors and you're breathing in fresh air and there's pleasant smells in the air and your pain is lessened. Ah. All right, I'm in a very good position here. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. I can, I can survive and fall. Don't hold back. You can? I can survive the fall. It's just 20 feet. It's like 1d6. It's just roll... 2d6. It's... Oh, is it? It's 1d6 Whatever. per 10 feet. Um... No, I thought the first 10 feet was free. That was like a <laughs> minecraft situation. I'm just gonna leave it up to chance. Okay. Uh, Alex, you are let go. Oh! And then oh. you fall oh, ever so gently me. to the floor as Pontifex casts Feather Fall. Oh, I don't yeah, have permission to unlock. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, right, you uh, gently. Up. Oh. Hey, we did it. Um, sure, drop to the floor so. below. You just hear Pontifex shouting your name from above, uh, and what should have been a harsh and painful fall is just a, a soft landing. Ah. Uh, meanwhile, Brooke, up here. Just me, your local froggy guardian angel. <laughs> Go and reposition yourself. Uh, it, it does. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Twenty to hit you, Brooke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that hit. Oh, that's the wrong set of block. We don't need that yet. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now these tendrils are wrapping themselves around you. Uh, you take uh, a whole four, four piercing damage. Uh, but now you are grappled. Uh, and I need a wisdom saving throw from you. Wait, no. This is already done. I don't need a wisdom saving throw from you. Uh, that's... The heart's already gotten its angst out. Yeah. Uh, that's... It. Um, the Tresim uh, out here sees the uh, the person dusting off their clothes and then sort of like giving, t tilting their head to the side uh, in a bit of a like of a confused expression. Um, and then the the rest of you would uh. uh hear uh, this voice kind of kind of calling out as a figure emerges from from uh, uh, this alcove uh, just shouting out all right what's going on around here uh, you see <laughs> an orcish woman um, joining uh, the the fray she's dressed in these light pelts uh, they look kind of comfortable on her and don't seem to offer much protection in terms of uh, armor uh, but her clothes are dirty, her hair is a mess, uh, but she uh, she at least looks muscular and she's in the process of drawing a sword uh, from its sheath. I believe she'll go right after 
scripted, but I guess we're about to find out what is scripting things. Um, as I hit fresh and spawn. Yeah, it's after Pip. Okay, Brooke, it's your turn. Oh, Wait, Jesus. who's after Pip? Ah, uh, this woman this, also. This uh, orcish woman. Yeah, ignore that. That just climbed out of the the coffin thing. To... Okay. Um, I am grappled. You are. I cannot attack while being grappled, right? You can. You, you can. just can't move. Oh, cool. Then the I'll only thing grapple does is set your speed to zero. All right, then I'll attack him. Okay. Feel like you might be one to two good hits from putting this one down. Let's make it one. <laughs> 18 hits. Hmm. Eight slashing for <coughs> Radiant. Uh, it was just one blow. Uh, you narrow your eyes and take aim and chop off the tendril that's that's wrapped around uh, your your waist, uh, and then you continue the motion to stab through the heart. Um, which stops moving and collapses on the floor. I think Anything in else? one motion he will turn around and while turning around try to slice the other heart. Mm -hmm. Seventeen hits. Good that I have these modifiers. Alright. 15 slashing for Radiant. Okay. Um, and as you drive your blade into the next heart, uh, and it screams so loudly, your ear protection, it's, it's helping, but it feels like it's not the sound that hurts, but it's what you're feeling. Uh, I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Three. Okay. Roll a d8 for me, please. Three. Okay. Um. I can't pause the music. No. Everyone turn the volume down. Yeah, I can't either. Oh. Okay, well, I could swap it to something else. All right. Whatever works. Okay. Uh, three. Uh, mm -hmm. Rook. Your house is still dusty and silent. You are a shell of a man, empty and exhausted. Your wrinkled hand holds another with all the strength that your old fingers are capable of. You are there right by his side when your husband takes his final breath. You have shared so many wonderful years together, and the joy of a life lived to the fullest is only matched by the grief you are feeling. You bury the love of your life. You pick up your cane, and you pray for the gods to take you as well as soon as possible. The next thing you become aware of are the tears streaming down your cheeks. Uh, your body doesn't quite feel like your own, uh, and this memory feels like it's, it's yours, it's real, or maybe it's not yours, but definitely real. 
Okay. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, bonus action, Squeak is going to make a squeak attack. Squeak attack. Uh, oh, down here. Yep. 22 to hit. 22 hits. All right. So this is magical, if it makes any difference. And it has to make a constitution saving throw unless it's immune to poison. Uh, 16. Okay, that's a success, but it does take half of this. So five. <laughs> Um, hmm. Squeak and Tekka are the same distance away from this heart, so I'm just going to say even is Tekka, and that's a three. So, Squeak needs to roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, I think it's just plus one, but let me check. Eight. Ah. All right. I'll need a D eight from Squeak. Okay. Boop. Uh, three. I need a reroll. Okay. Eight. Okay. I don't have an eight yet. Eight on the eight. Oh. All right. Uh, or as small as Squeak is uh, right now, uh, as he's running, uh, he's he's tall. Uh, he's uh, dashing through a busy village, chased by a small armed crowd. Uh, he's fast and light, and each of his steps is catapulting him a dozen feet forward. Uh, his moth barely keeps up with him. Uh, and eventually, she just clings to his shoulder and allows herself to simply be carried along. When he reaches a dead end, he leaps into the world of dreams and keeps running, and then jumps out, and then back in, and then out again, easily losing his pursuers. And when he stops to catch his breath, he looks down at his small pouch in his hands. And he comes up with a plan. For Squeak, the experience is going to be different than uh, what Brooke and Tekka have felt. Uh, as Squeak kind of returns to reality and he's not crying. Uh, instead, he's feeling this sense of determination uh, and hope. Uh, that he instinctively understands to be sharing with this creature. Uh, and the two of them stop fighting. Huh. Uh, this is currently Pip's turn, yeah? Yes. Uh, so is there anything else he wanted to do? Yes. Uh. Huh. <laughs> Processing. Buffering. Um, <laughs> okay. So Pip's going to back away from this thing. Um, How to handle this. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Pip is going to cast Mind Sliver on this heart as he's backing away. Uh, uh, so that's I didn't an see what you're pointing. Which one? Uh, this, this one. Okay. Intelligence saving throw? Yep. Uh, one. 
Okay. Uh, so that's 2d6 <laughs> psychic damage for seven. Uh, it was one eight point away from death. Hey. Um. This one, this one. Oh, it's this one. Uh, got it. It falls over. Let's go, Alfreda. Uh, nearly knocks the ball downstairs. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it is out of combat. Alright. That's it for Pip's turn. Okay. The orc that just emerged from uh, uh, from this section of the crypt uh, um, is looking around at the situation, uh, takes a bit of a step away from this heart, uh, um, and in in her general perplexity, she does manage to crack a little smile at the chest and says, "Hey," um, and then decides to interact with the animal probably later, uh, and uh, uh, instead. And there is this fight going on, so that's where she'll move. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 40 uh, just enough. Look at that. Uh, she's going to be here and um, coming to Brooke's rescue. Um, or so it appears uh, as. Uh, uh, her her sword is drawn, uh, and she seems to be like in the process of being about to uh, cut down this heart. Uh, he sees you, Brooke, and uh, uh, winks at you and says, "Hey!" And that's her whole turn. Um, oh. See, oh, there's a choice of targets. It's you, Brooke. What is wrong with her? <laughs> <laughs> Seems very okay with everything There's going on. There's something wrong with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quirky lat <Latin> gal. <laughs> um, why did I roll it like this? I rolled the wrong dice. Uh, Brooke, you're, you're currently grappled by it, right? I was grappled by the one from. Yeah. Okay. The you killed the one grappling him. Mm. Ah, right, 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 right. Well, you are definitely grapped, grappled now. Uh, is this an... Uh, uh, unless. Uh, 19 to hit? It's exactly my armor claw. Da, 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 da. Oh, but minimum damage. You take 4 piercing damage. Hey, yo. Um, and for a moment, that vision kind of comes into clarity <coughs> once again. Uh, and then it fades away, but it, it feels like it's really being carved uh, into your mind. Um, this heart is letting go of Tekka and um, moving away. Uh, it's not disengaging in case uh, Tekka wants to take a, an opportunity attack. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, and even though it lacks a face, um, it's more the the feeling that you can kind of tell what it is feeling, uh, and it's this desire of being alive, uh, not just merely surviving this battle, but not wanting to fight it at all. Uh, it pulls away from the rest of you, but it doesn't even feel like it's running. More like it's judging you. <laughs> it's judging us? It's judging yeah, like, <laughs> judging getting him? a feel for, for who is in front of it. Yeah, get judged, Tekka. <laughs> <laughs> and Tekka just can't catch a break with anyone. <laughs> even the giant, bleeding hearts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stereotype him. 
Is it Frida's um, turn? Yes, and Frida uh, uh, saw a Frida. dashing orc dashing um, ac across that that walkway, and uh, uh, as she as she did, she she shouted, uh, "Devamia!" Uh, and the or the orc in reply grinned at her and said, "Hey, little diamond." Uh, Frida is just uh, <laughs> not going to approach the ball that she's been told to be uh, away from, but she looks like she really wants to go that way. Hey, could you stab that one, like, just in case? <laughs> just really need you to stab it. Or just strike it. Uh, she... <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Hmm. The voice comes from way down here, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, roll it anyway. Okay. All the way down here. Okay. Um, it, it comes through clear enough uh, um, that she sets aside the momentary, the momentary uh, perplexity, uh, and she does know to at least double tap. Um, and even though she looks very uncomfortable, she she does so. Yes. Ah, and that's it, Pontifex. Uh, okay. uh, let move the orb. Can I just send it over an head? Uh, you're cutting out at the beginning and ends of your sentences. Oh, sorry. Uh, Maybe but, my mic's uh, being weird. Uh, so can I just you... send my orb over an edge? Um... It doesn't have a I movement speed. I can direct speed. it over barriers and be... jump it across pits. Ah, it does specify that. So I guess so it, it technically jump. right, like it can cover that much distance vertically and that much horizontally. Um. Uh, okay, then I guess I'm just going to move it uh, thirty down. I get you said it's twenty feet between areas, right? Yeah, between floors. So would I be able to move it here? This is a the map's not working with me here, but it'll be 10 feet in the air. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's so do that. That's the bonus. Here, but oh god, I have unlocked the floor. Mmm. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Nothing has Nothing exploded. exploded. Yep. Okay, so over here? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just 10 feet up, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and then... Oh, I'm no. Gonna... No! Oh, is... Now the floor is gone. Oh, gee. <laughs> what have I done? I was just wanted to lock the ball. <laughs> you can right-click it first before Seven you do feet, it to make sure zero, that you're zero. not sick. Yeah, else. I thought I had it. I was a, was a fool. Ah, uh, that there looks about that right, though. Fine. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and the ball is here. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to... Pontifex is going to... To here. Uh, and the one that is down on the, the ground level with Tekka and Talix. He is going to mess with. He doesn't know. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to toll the dead. Uh, DC 16 wisdom save on the lively thief. <laughs> 15. Uh, so is this one injured? Yep. So big dead. Quick stung it. Big dice, okay rolls. Uh, nine points of necrotic damage. Got it. Uh, you hear the, uh, I guess, Tekka and Talix. You hear the, the bleeding of a goat. 
<laughs> from from way up in the air. Uh, and Devamia also hears a, you know, behind her. <laughs> uh, and that is, I think he's going to stay where he is up here. Yeah, after seeing the uh, the heart kind of wither from the damage and seeing what's going on, Talix might kind of cry out. Wait, I, I think it changed. Yes, it is corroding. That is the point. No, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's suddenly called the thief in my head. That's the good guy. <laughs> yeah, can Tekka judge the demeanor of this heart after uh, what or just occurred? Yeah, what, what I what I said earlier. Uh, you're you're. It's like you, you're having this very powerful sense of empathy in the sense that you can tell what it is feeling, and it does not want to fight you at all. I think Tekka winds back his core staff as if to strike before he lands one end on the ground. It says, Leave and live. And then he will head back towards Telex. You have given me fresh air. And you seem safe. Hmm. Toss will just give kind of an awkward smile. What now? Oh, I guess we should join the others. Let's get out of here. Take I will give a nod, and uh, uh, can I prepare a move action? If, do yeah, I you can, follow Talix? You can hold the dash, you can hold your movement. Yeah. Then we'll tell, uh, Take will do that. Hey, okay. what does Squeak like to do? Squeak is going to turn away from this one, seeing it not being a threat anymore and instead is going to come up to the sounds of commotion up here. Ah. <laughs> That's the sound of commotion. <laughs> and uh, just like fly on up, ready his stinger and just say, what's this one's deal? And uh, get ready to strike while using the help action to give Rook advantage on his next attack. Right. Is it dressing up to anything? Uh, no. The uh, I think maybe yeah. The Tressum is gonna follow uh, Devamia. Uh, so it will uh, it will fly forty feet and uh, continue to take the dodge action. I think the Tressum is more just wanting to uh, observe. Actually, maybe the Tressum will fly out. In the Here, or whatever, but, you know, up in the air. Okay. Like, up, uh, probably level with the second floor. Um, roughly. Which brings us to Talix. Um, okay. Bonus action, heal Tekka again. Heal eight more. Thank you. And I guess Talix is just going to make his way to the stairs and uh, dash. Oh, right. No. Where am I? Here we go. Oh, I can't move under there at all. Oh, yeah. It's all Because I've broken the collision. It's my bad. Okay, so uh, just one, two, yeah. three, four. Five, six, and then I could dash. One, two, three, four. I'll, I'll just end up like right 
Oh. <sighs> it's hard to. Corner? Sure, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah, attack and go at least as far as I can. Okay. Uh, That's it for now. Down. Uh, Brooke. Uh, you're not <laughs> really feeling like yourself at all. Ah, uh, uh, no. Role play it as you wish. You just feel grief stricken. Um. Did he. I think he will look at it and then. Still swing a sword and tries to finish it with one. Okay. Did you say I have advent? Yeah, Squeak is helping. And and there's flanking. Double. That depends advantage. on whether you uh, oh. on what you think of her. Oh. So, <laughs> do you think she's an ally? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so it's <laughs> 26 to hit. Uh, yeah. Sixteen. Four radiant. Um, on this one. Whoops. Oh. Holy crap! 16 is exactly what you needed, actually. To the final hit point, how would you like to do this? I guess it's just one with strike with a sword. An upward slash. Uh, you almost feel like it's hurting you. Uh, as much as you're hurting it. And for a second, you feel like you have been dealt a deadly blow. And then you, you blink and uh, uh, it, it wasn't your body that was hurt. Uh, uh, your fine, actually. Uh, his heart collapses and you just end up making eye contact with the person behind it. And uh, uh, I think we are out of initiative. How long can you guys keep playing for today? An hour, maybe? Yeah, another hour. Works. Okay. Now it feels good for everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's take a break and then we'll play for a final hour. All right. Cool. Alrighty. Um, yeah, okay. 10 oh. minutes right at the, at the hour? Yeah. This is so cool. Right. <laughs> hey, I can probably heal like everyone, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have eight more heals. Nice. <laughs> nice. Let me, let me roll for myself. Heal this happens. heart. I feel bad for him. We're ready to resume. Let me bring back the scene to this, and let me bring back the original music. Uh, each of these art creatures... Uh, Ah, he's no longer moving, except for one, who is refusing to fight you. Um, with the, uh, uh, uh Thunder Sphere gone. Oh, ah, uh, Talix won. Did, did you guys do this already? Oh yeah, I see you're all healed up. Well, look at that! Um, I have two extra heals that I haven't accounted for, so if, if that would go on Freyda or something uh, else. Yeah, Freyda is missing, uh, uh almost 100% uh, of her hit points. <laughs> Oh. Didn't have many. Yeah, she got uh, she got grappled. Um, but yeah, she eventually dashes and manages to make it all the way back back down uh, down to the floor where uh, it's getting kind of crowded. Um, Devamia asks uh, Brooke kindly uh, if she can step through, and he will slowly step back, um, not getting his not putting his eyes off her. Attack of opportunity. <laughs> um, with uh, uh, the the elf and the orc uh, uh, 
eventually just reuniting, uh, hugging one another. Uh, Freda just looked scared out of her mind, but uh, Devami is, is pretty relaxed. Uh, they, they share a hug and a kiss, and then the, the orc just glances over at the rest of you that are sort of like awkwardly, awkwardly crowded around them and says, Right, so uh, what's the deal with you guys? Oh, uh, we, we just saved you. Oh, hey. Cool. Thank you. I, I, I didn't need it, but I appreciate it. You didn't. Because it seemed like you were in a dungeon full of monsters, is all. Yeah, well, I was observing them. Ah, uh, for a while. And uh, from what I saw, had I waited it out, they would have taken care of themselves. Well, except that one down there. Ah, uh, and she'll just, like, point uh, in the direction of the one heart that is sort of standing around. Uh, that, that one's different. Uh, the others, though. They've just been pulling one another out of those coffins and just uh, killing each other. Yeah, Isn't it fascinating? What, what is going on with the heart down there? Attack at you behaved strangely and Telex said something about the change. Why am I not melting its brain? If it has one. <laughs> they it's are just not standing there menacingly. Us. What Tekka said? They are not attacking. This is not our place. I, if uh, I... Go ahead. I was just gonna say, I uh, feel some sort of kinship to that one. Uh, he, he was a street rat, and uh, he had like... Uh, like a little moth companion, uh, kind of like that one that we saw in the in the tower and uh, he just sort of like uh it's hard to explain i because i never seen it with my own eyes but sort of entered in and out of dream worlds dreams a moth well, that sounds like an etaro doof uh, and she takes out a little notebook uh the mommy does and starts taking notes an etaro what etaro doof you know, the ones that... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Doof. <laughs> the ones with the moths. Uh, of course. Uh, let me... Talix will take out his journal and... Start searching through they it. They have matching journals. <laughs> oh no! If I can, if I can There's translate that no for you guys, what I think they're meaning is that we felt when I got struck by the thing in front of me, by some kind of memories. I'm assuming. So whatever Taker has seen with the guy below there, probably made him change his mind. On whether he's hostile or not. That also means... Pip, this one here might be interesting for you. What do you mean? Well... It was grieving a loss. A loss of a loved one. Isn't that one of your things? Oh! Oh yeah! I, oh, that helps a lot! I, I just had Frida stab that one up there and hope that would count. But that, that might be better. <laughs> Wait, is that the heart and that you're carving going to... this one up? <laughs> Isn't that a little big? I, no, I'm I'm chopping it in little pieces. Do you need the whole heart? <laughs> I'm not gonna take any chances. The pouch what? is only this big. <laughs> Squeak just holds out the little tiny pouch. <laughs> uh, uh... 
Hmm. You know, I had planned on making sure that each and every single one of these was dead by the end of the day, but I wasn't planning on desecrating the remains. That's where I draw the line. Wait, what? but do you even understand what these are? Oh, I have no idea. You're so you you're Something all saying that you Joanne saw their Mike. memories. Memories of of when? Well, excellent question, isn't that? What did you guys see? She's wow. uh, Devami is just holding her her own notebook. Uh, uh, it's almost quivering in her hands. Talus is going to move over by her and like try to peek at her notes, <laughs> while also writing down. Well, in her notebook, I it says felt... met half elf with Oops. journal like mine, while Talus is simultaneously writing met orc woman <laughs> with journal like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the memories I felt, it was definitely a person. Oh. Think of that as you want. What sort of person? Good question. An old one. Did I get like a more concrete description? Of at least... Uh, of uh, who the memory belonged to? No, Comments. no, no. More of like uh, who whose hand he held, or she. Um. Yes. Ah, oh, there it is. Yep. Um. I'm just. Triple checking that I got this uh, correctly. <coughs> um, mm -hmm. The the person that was uh, uh, dying on the bed, um, the the white hair didn't tip you off because he he just looked old. But then the white box uh, do tell you that he was uh, Anitara May, uh, the ones with with Unin. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure what he was, but at least the person grieving was <coughs> an Atara maid. Oh, and you would have seen the box on your own arms. Uh, both of them oh. were Atara maid. Sand scripts at first part. So mm -hmm. I'd assume with at least what I could see from my arms that I was at least similar. What I'm gathering from all of this is that uh, you all experienced memories of some sort. Uh, yeah, when even, even Freda and the Vami nod. Then, wait. Uh -huh. uh, let's. Uh, tell us it's going to run and look at one of the coffins. Hopefully, one that's already opened and it's not going to. Bring forth any more hearts, uh, but uh, sure, are they are open. they are they inscribed? No. Um, hmm. You take your time to look it over, and it's distinctive in a sense that there is absolutely nothing recognizable about it. There is no text, no name, um, and you move on to check the next one, and it seems that they're all designed to be completely anonymous and identical to one another. Uh, and in some of them, you find other of these heart creatures already dead. Hmm. So, Pip, you want to take that whole thing in your pouch? So, uh, Pip, like, right now has a carving knife and is just, like, 
slicing off large chunks of this heart. Pip's hands and arms are like currently covered in blood and he's just like uh. slopping them into uh, this uh, pouch that Squeak's holding open. Yep, yep, there you go. All right, now get that one there. Okay. Two women move away from the mess. Um, the, the Vami seems to look disapprovingly at this and also in a very concerned manner towards Pip, uh, but after having expressed that she would rather you don't do that, um, that that's all the opposition that she puts up. Uh, and let's see, let's you do it. I'll kneel down and help cutting. The hey, thing. Professor, do you mind moving this ball of lightning away from us at least? You know, I would, but I seem to have lost control over both it and my cat, so I think it's just going to be looming there for a bit. They just don't be within five feet and you'll be fine. So, uh, there it goes. <laughs> it appears to have reckon... lost control. I mean... That's really cathartic. It's... <laughs> Did you notice a certain time? Oh, you were both down here studying these runes, correct? They nod. Did the hearts only awaken after you came down here? Um, they... So, Frida nods, but Ivami seems to think about it, and her answer is, uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Might have happened while we were here, uh, but at some point we saw one of them. I mean, they were killing each other. They couldn't have been here long. I wonder what woke them up. Hmm. Yes, I do wonder. If I may make some note. Ah, is this a bad time to ask for your names and what you're doing here? Or, uh, I mean, you don't have to tell me, but I'd love to know. Okay. Uh, my, <laughs> my name is Talix Meyer. Uh, I'm... Uh... An aspiring researcher, maybe not too different from yourselves. And uh, we're all here to uh, learn to a research. bit more about the inner continents. Well, it's nice to see fellow Plurnans all the way up here. And sure. if research is what you're here to do, I would love to exchange notes. Oh, you don't have to, but that would uh, be nice. No, that's certainly, certainly. Though, I still have a few lingering questions about this place first. I feel uh, maybe like I can answer we... them? Alright, here, let me, let me show you answer. around. Talos is going to look towards the uh, lively thief there. Yeah. Oh, that one? I have no idea what's going on. The others, well, I... Ah, let's see. She she goes through her nose, flips a few pages uh, back towards uh, uh, closer towards the beginning, um, and uh, takes a brief look at them and says, "I felt something um, when the first one attacked me, and later when a second one also did, and they were grabbing me around, and it was a bad time, and I got away, and it was fine, uh, and then I hid away, and I collected my thoughts." And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, both of them were hurting to the point of uh, uh, willingly seeking their own demise. Hence, they were killing one another. At least that's a feeling I have and couldn't really verify it, but it really felt real. That's so They look sad. like human hearts, but... 
Uh, they are quite oversized for, for being one. Uh, still, 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 still. You see this coffin? Uh, she's moving uh, past Freda and gesturing at the one you just checked, Alex. Uh, compared to the rest of the building, it is newer. Uh, and it is of a different craftsmanship. This building feels like it was designed for a different purpose than the one it is currently being used for. Isn't that exciting? I suppose. Though. It feels like it was dug around the time when Stilling Dread was defeated. But the, the coffins who? themselves. Oh. Not sure. Um. Let me double check this. Uh, uh. Nope, she just says, not sure. But Why? maybe we'll find an answer here. I mean, that's why we came all the way out here. And there it is! Skeleton of Stilling Dread! Ah! Isn't it an exciting sight? Is it this heartening one? Ah, heart, I, I get it. There are bigger ones. I, I'm glad you got it, but uh, that there are bigger dragons in the lore that this guy is concerning. Do you have information how big the Lord of the Sky is? Do you have exact measurements? Probably. Uh, she awaits Quill and End. Exact eyeball measurements, but they have a bit of an eye for detail. Um. Uh, I don't know, it's about yay by yay. <laughs> I don't know how to convey this. <laughs> okay. Accurate enough. If you <laughs> scribble it down. Uh, you all look a little lost. Should we get some fresh air? In a or bit. we can be down here. I mean, there's plenty of... I'm not going to ask why you're doing that. Oh, but you look like you would appreciate this. Uh, Come with me, check this out. Oh, she's trying to just grab you, uh, drag you along, Talix. So the the stilling dread, who who was she? Uh, well, up until uh, your blue friend up there corrected me, I thought he was the biggest dragon to have ever lived. Wait, so the Lord of the Sky was bigger? Ah, uh, she double checks with him, who like adjusts his measurements and she fixes her notes a little bit and says, oh no, she was the biggest one. Well, look at that. <laughs> it's difficult to calculate the size of a dragon from uh, the eye, but I, I think I got it. Sure. And, uh, uh, well, what else is there to say about her? Uh, she had a breath weapon that could turn anything and anyone into stone. Uh, and uh, the back when the big war happened across the continent, uh, she was the greatest of all dragon warriors until she was defeated. The war that preceded the isolation of the Atar? Uh, the isolation of everyone. So, the dragons got the sky, but the demons got the sea, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everyone else got the land, but not quite. Some got the land, the others got the dreams. Although the distinction between the two of them is the least uh, um, unbreakable one. So the Atara were isolated at the same time. As the the Atara were between... banished uh, after that war. Ah. Hmm. By then, the dragons had already been sent away, and so were the fiends. No, no, the, the Atara were banished by the Nahadra. That was 
long after the war with the dragons. So these coffins, they could have belonged to both. I suppose so. Where are we going? <laughs> oh, isn't this wall exciting? I suppose. Why don't you tell me what's exciting about it? Well, look at the water damage. Oh. Doesn't it tell a whole story? This is what you wanted to show me? Oh, no, I was just walking and talking. What? <laughs> What was the thing? Um... One. <laughs> uh... Devamia is going to... approach Tis coffin. Um... In... On Tis... In, inside of this room, there is a dead heart. Uh, it's not in the coffin, it's out of it. Uh, and it's sort of... Uh, uh, collapsed directly in front of it um, and she'll she'll gesture at it and there is some uh, sadness uh, in, in her eyes uh, as she speaks and says ah, this is one of the ones that, that hurt me I wasn't the one who killed it one of the others did but it felt like I experienced something that, that wasn't quite my own experience, but felt like it was mine, at least at that moment. Um, I was a man. I was pulling myself out of this, out of this hole, uh, up on on the ground, and when I looked back, there was this enormous chasm, this maw in the earth that spanned miles of ground. I could feel my muscles burning, and I was out of breath, and I was hurt, and that was sad. I had just lost my entire group, my friends. One of them was my brother. But that's the thing, I don't have a brother. Um, and I've never seen a place like that one. But you know what was so exciting about it? What? Well, the giant hole in the ground for once, I do hope to visit it someday, but... My skin... Which, I mean, wasn't mine, but... I could see the vox on my arm, and they were shimmering. They were translucent. They looked like gemstones. Do you know about the Grelko? Uh, I might have heard one or two things. Well, I should have known that you would have known. Uh, and she, like, slams a hand on your back, and she's strong. Oh. <clears throat> um, right. Well, there's that. Did you see anything? I didn't... somehow. Uh, but I also tend to not remember dreams. Maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe you should practice, like, write them down every time you wake up. So you'll build up uh, some, some memory. Have you ever tried? Uh, I... actually, I don't think I... I might not have them at all. Curious? She'll make a note. Are you making notes about me? Uh, may I? Please. I'll credit you. For what? What is interesting about me? I'm just here to learn. Okay. And you see her just scratching out uh, the the note she has, just, she has just made. She's like she's drawing a line over it. Ah, uh, Pip, you're done. 
uh, chopping up this heart by now. Uh, it's uh, a lot Kent, of tiny like, pieces. wipes the sweat off of his forehead, just Rook getting did most open. of the work. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you swiping my sweat off? Do you want me to? It holds up bloody hand. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> All right, that should be enough, I hope. I don't get like a like a an alarm or anything if it's, you know, what she needs or not. I mean, if she gives a giveaway description, she has to deal with the result. That right? seems pretty literal, I think. So we got it. Uh, so, are you just stuffing like the pieces into the pouch? Yep. Okay. Um, and the pouch looks like it should not <laughs> be able to contain this entire body, but... Every time you put some of the flesh in, it just disappears. And you do this over and over and over uh, until there's uh, nothing but just like the, the liquids left behind. <laughs> Pitbull like hang the pouch over the edge and just sort of like swipe some of the liquids down into it. Just in case. Mm-hmm. Disturbing. And at the at the same time, uh, we'll also put in the red sand, the black sand, and the sprig. Okay. Noted. Um, are you doing okay, Matt? Yeah, I keep disconnecting from Tabletop Simulator, and but Discord my is Discord's fine. running slow. Very oh. weird. Just making sure you were able to follow the conversation. Yeah, yeah, I've I've been hearing most things. Okay. Um, Tekka, uh, around mm -hmm. this time, uh, this heart has begun to move very slowly. And it had started to make its way up the stairs, but like it stops halfway. Uh, you almost feel like it's maybe it's looking at you or it's just being wary of you. Tekka will crouch down on one knee and hold a, a hand to this um, heart in front of him. In nature, nothing given but returning to her. Our link true as you and I. These chains hold you no longer. Before he turns left and see yeah, this heart going upwards. Can't take a read any impression from the way it's acting um rolling is a check okay there isn't really any body language that you can possibly interpret but when you extend out a hand and you speak to it uh, um, one of its tendrils uh, mimics your gesture and reaches for your fingers. And the moment it makes contact, you are struck by this thought, this idea, this desire to survive. And it feels not just like a desire, but like an idea. There is a plan in motion, uh, and it is succeeding. And it is good, and it makes you happy. The tendril pulls away from you, and uh, um, your your mind becomes your own again, and those feelings kind of wash away, and you, you remember them, but you recognize them as exterior to, to your own mind. Uh, this art has something on its mind, and seems to be in the process of getting it done. You've 
otherwise sense the no malevolence. In fact, it feels like it's on its way. It's ready to leave. Having felt that feeling, I think Tekka will start clearing away upwards. <clears throat> uh, will everyone let this art pass? If it doesn't attack Tekka, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does not. It goes around the stairs and up a floor and then up another floor uh, until he's up here and woo! Uh, it's heading towards the exit. We so have deserved to... enough. We should go. Well, that was my question. You two, did you do anything else here? Did you move anything, disturb anything? Did you Nothing. open the coffin? Oh, no. So, th just in coming here, they woke up? It's either a very peculiar coincidence, or... Well, it's something I cannot explain right now. Um, okay. Freda, you can barely hear uh, her very soft voice as she's uh, uh, just repeating uh, um, uh, to, to, to Babia. I, I, I didn't touch anything. I'm sure of it. I didn't touch anything. Oh, Vamia puts a puts a finger on her on her lips and says, "Shh, I know, I know, I know. You didn't do anything. It's you don't have to explain yourself." Hey, okay. um, where's Murderclaw? Oh, um, you know, I left uh, him up there. Suddenly, the name is starting to make more sense. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you guys saw him? He's a sweetheart. He brought me here. No, he didn't. And by Did extension, he? brought us, us here, here. No, he doesn't mm -hmm. like strangers. How about he wanted to help you? Help me. Got a very faithful pet. That's lovely. I didn't need any help, but. Oh, was it worried? We should go. We should go get him. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, is like immediately taking off. Uh, um, she grabs Freda by by one arm, uh, and they're beginning to also make their way upstairs. Do the rest of you want to do anything else down here? Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Okay. Uh, on the way um, up, Freda is uh, kind of trying to slow down the Vamia, uh, and and she's saying, oh, there, "There's, uh, there's more. Oh, there's a couple more up there outside." Uh, the Vamia is in less of a hurry to go now, uh, and she actually pauses to consider this. Glances back at the rest of you. Were you about to say something, Matt? Uh, no, it's not Morden. Stone circle? Yeah. It is a little conspicuous. Like, mean, if, is, if we just eyeball anything? it, do it look any... Like, yeah. if, if what? If we just like, it, look at this thing... This thing in the middle, look. on the floor? Yeah. What, what is it this? Uh, if like it, looks, it, it, it looks like an elevated portion. Um, there's nothing on it uh, but it is definitely built to be it it's like a whole foot and a half up from the ground yeah there, I can't there's just let no that one symbols stand. on it no like things on it his talix also staring at it intently uh, okay let's check it out yeah let's go uh wait here, is gonna grab your we'll wrist go and start to step over the edge <laughs> <laughs> The you got a way to move this? 
Uh, he's gonna step on it. And like, get a, like a look around the room uh, to see if like, maybe this is a perspective point or something. Um, I don't know. How about you roll, you roll an investigation check? I will as well. I want to see if there's, if it would move or anything. Can I guidance myself for this one? Yeah. Oh, you crap, are actively looking for things. I guess in case it matters, so. Ah, uh, puts me up to 25. I have been struck by a sudden headache. Wow. Okay. Uh, oh no. 25 and 22. Two checks over a 20 will do that. Damn. <laughs> You're hurting my head. <laughs> um. Just investigating so much. So, stepping on it doesn't uh, seem to do anything. And you're looking around and seeing if maybe from this particular spot there's anything around the, the room that looks different. Um, <laughs> but it, it feels stable. It doesn't feel like a, a mechanism. And it doesn't feel like there used to be something up here that is no longer here. Uh, both of you um, come to the conclusion that uh, uh, this was built after the rest of this place was built and the kind of stone matches that of the coffins uh, so you're putting it like in as a timeline some things happened before others and the coffins in this particular spot here feels like they they came after uh, and something about it feels like it is uh, um it's it's centered position feels like it is of a ritualistic importance uh, rather than a a practical uh, a practical one. Um, you imagine Does it that seem like uh, this is something that's unfinished. It uh, it doesn't feel unfinished. Um, it feels like it was part of a process. Um, and you wouldn't understand the details, but it, 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 looking at it and looking at the positions of the coffins and the fact that they keep, they seem to have basically come here together, uh, you figure it was part uh, of perhaps something like a funeral. Uh, the, the process of having brought the coffins here. Hmm. Uh, I guess, do I have any like theological knowledge of of like any specific religious rituals that these type of tombs would do so like a religion type thing i, I might know or like i've read about these are different from this anything ever done it yeah, right it is different from anything done in plurna um i wasn't sure if these were plurnan things that were added afterwards they, they don't feel like they are plurnan okay with that role, you're, both of you are pretty sure it is, it is all Ladarian. Yeah, I got Bumpkiss. Some sort of ritual thing. Maybe burial rites or something. I just get the suspicion that these weren't normal burials. Oh, tell you what. Uh, since you both rolled a really high on investigation and you are both spellcasters, you will get this feeling. It's distant, it's old, uh, but there was magic that was once performed here. And any of that magic is long gone. Uh, it, there's just the lingering ghost of it. You can't really discern anything about it. You just feel like magic was cast here at some point and it was powerful. You know, part of me actually thinks this may have something to do with the dragon up above. There was a castle, we were told, of where people went to die. I feel like this might have a similar... place. Mm. These things sought their own destruction. Maybe... Maybe this was somehow related to that. 
it seems that you all experience memories of some sort, so your guess is likely better than mine. I'm just going off what they told me. Anyway, this place seems sad and morbid. I'm ready to be done with it for now. Maybe we revisit another time. We'll figure it out. Here we go. There. Um, did the rest of you want to do anything, or, wait, or were you just waiting for Talix and Pontifex? Just a yeah, question. Yeah, waiting. Yeah. Hmm? Pip was just gonna ask Tekka. Hey, are, are you doing okay? These emotions were not to be disturbed. They were overwhelming. You you saw something? I saw one in chains. Desperate to be set free. I guess what led them here, I do not know. I do not wish to know. Well, I guess if they were trying to kill each other, in a way, maybe you did set it free? Death is never this simple. You ready to get out of here? This is not our place. Hey. Um. Freda tells, tells me that there is a few survivors outside. Uh, we're discussing what to do about them. The way I see it, we can check if they want, uh, well, what they want. Uh, it's risky, but it feels like we can get a glimpse into what they're thinking, or at least uh, what they experienced. And we could see if they are like the one that just moved away, or more like the ones that just tried to kill us. You mean whether they want to die? I... yeah. Didn't want to say it, but yeah. I so think it's kind of look back at the rest. I think if they're attacking each other and doing the job anyways, we might as well not interfere and let them do their things. If we can avoid it. I don't think any one of us is necessarily into getting hurt by one of those things just to <coughs> learn that it wants to die. Hmm. Right, right. I didn't want to imply that you would, but uh, you know, you know, you know. We can go then. I mean, I'm not the only one who's speaking for this group, so. You're not? You kind of look like their leader. <laughs> I don't think our group works like that. I am the leader. You heard him. <laughs> did, did that look like it came from Pip or very squeak sadly <laughs> right now? Uh, squeaks up there. Okay. Um, hey, the, the, the Vamia. It glances over and at first uh, kind of kind of chuckles at the at the remark, uh, but then her. Uh, her jaw drops and says, wait, you're one of those. You're a devil. Hey, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> she gets it. Uh, can I ask you a few questions? I would be happy to have you ask them. 
There is a mini interview that takes place uh, <laughs> as you leave the script. By the time uh, the first of you steps outside, um, the the place beneath uh, uh, the remains of still in dread is as you left it, uh, except for two of those hard creatures that lie dead in each other's limbs. It looks like the problem resolved itself. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Take your minis Damn. back. You're gonna have to give me a kitty cat. Yeah, kitty cat. <laughs> Those Great two session. seem like really good friends. Yeah. Roommates, even. Yeah. Maybe siblings? <laughs> Cousins, I think. <laughs> yeah, let's go with cousins. Yeah, nice, uh, yeah, nice cheery little little yeah. place. Yeah, yeah I figured yeah. we'd we'd uh, come back to a uh, a happy session. Yeah. Glad to be back, y'all. The recap yeah. was epic. <laughs> oh my goodness, it really was. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> Sid. How long did that take you? Should I ask? <laughs> um, it was probably three days of work. Wow. Three. Wow. Amazing stuff, it's man. It's three more days of effort than I do. <laughs> As in 72 work hours. No. You are non -stop. being a concentration, determination, and sheer force of will. <laughs> I, I so admire it. I so admire it. Great job. It is beautiful. It makes me happy. Oh, Should we ask Orm a question so about this place with uh, oh, yeah, let's yeah. feature before we leave? Right. Yeah. Do oh, that. Hey, you want to I first? always forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, what, I what's our question? Okay. What What is the. Uh, how does this work? You may encourage Orm to restore the Outlander's yeah. Guide to Ladaria. When you do so, ask any question about Ladaria. It's a 5% chance that Orm can immediately recover relevant knowledge from his pages. I mean, should we ask <laughs> what, what this, place this place was used for? Yeah, what, <laughs> that what was... seems pretty. Yeah, I think that's the bold the stroke we kind of need. Yeah, what was this place used for? What yeah. was the purpose of this place? Okay, let's okay. do it. Ah, uh, he All wants right. to roll the percentage. Well, uh, they want the book. they want it to be the top percentage or the bottom that is a successful one. I think it's more fun if it's the big number. <laughs> so 95 to, to 100? 96 to 100. To 100. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I was trying to sneak us in an extra percentage. <laughs> this, <laughs> no. this is the difference. If it hits 95, I'm going to cry. See, which one is the big number? Uh, the, Whichever the left one. Oh, okay. This one. Okay. No! no. <laughs> uh, so... That this particular question, I love oh, that. Oh, look at that. Oh. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um. Oh, well. Okay. All right, now I'll let you go for good. For good? For good. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Until uh, next time. Until the next time. See you all in two months. No! No! <laughs> no. <laughs>